It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theroux here. Mary Jo Foley is here. Paul's installed the latest version of Windows 11 22 H2. He has some updates. And I'll ask the critical question, should I install 22 H2? Big, big news for PC makers Dell and Lenovo. And what's the deal with DuckDuckGo? Well, it's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 779. Recorded Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. Senor Once. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by userway.org. Userway is the world's number one accessibility solution. And it's committed to enabling the fundamental human right of digital accessibility for everyone. So when you're ready to make your site compliant, deciding which solution to use is an easy choice to make. Go to userway.org slash twit for 30% off Userway's AI-powered accessibility solutions. And by Melissa. Make sure your customer contacts data is up to date. Try Melissa's API in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned free at melissa.com slash twit. And by HackerRank. It's time to reboot your technical interviews with HackerRank's easy-to-use tools. With a pre-made question library, code, playback, and built-in whiteboard, you'll be conducting better technical interviews and instantly identifying the right talent. Go to hackerrank.com slash ww to start a better tech interview for free today. Hello, dozers. It's time for Windows Weekly. Once again, gathering around the virtual window to talk about <laughs> Microsoft with Paul Therott of Therott.com. He is mm -hmm. in the U.S. of A. today. You never know. You never know. That's true. I am. Uh, also here with us, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com, or ZDNet blog. She is in the USA as well, in New York. New York. I am. <laughs> Will there be a big parade today for the Queen's 70th Jubilee? <laughs> no? Uh, Maybe in Queens wow. they should do that. It's named after her, isn't it? I don't... I don't think that's no. it. No. <laughs> no. I don't think so. No. no. All right, Senior Once, it's time to talk Windows 11. What's the latest? Well, there is no latest. We don't have a bill, do we? Oh, we no. usually do by now, right? Well, yeah, yeah often. It's we are done. It's a short again. week. It's, it's a short week. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, they didn't have a Monday. So maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Plus, no I mean, what are you waiting for? There's going to be like some fixes. There's not going to be anything in it. There you go. You the for? voice it's of reason most speaks likely, once again. Yeah, we could get like a, uh, a dev no. channel build or something. No. Okay, I think it's Nothing. over. No, we could, but come on. You're you're holding out hope like there's going to be some big boom <laughs> feature. No, no. Well, Dude, um, no. you know, I'll start Man, to care about this. You're not the candle in the wind. You're the candle. I'm the candle and you're the wind. Exactly. <laughs> just it out. Like, put down the candle and go to bed. If, as Paul, soon as, time to put down the candle. As soon as uh, <laughs> Shanghai releases my uh, Dell XPS, yeah. I, will, I will care about this. You will. Right, right now. Of. Don't really. Yeah. Should I be on mm -hmm. the uh, in an insider ring of some of some sort? You think? So, given the timing, I you know last week my tip was <laughs> contrary to Mary Jo's facial expression. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I <laughs> I have since upgraded all of the computers that I could use uh, to twenty two H two using one of the methods I talked about last week. I mostly I use the sign into the insider program for the beta channel reboot install the build and then say you want to be off of this as soon as the final build is out that's the that's window right. shutting maneuver you spoke mm -hmm. yeah 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 so that's worked out fine i i um i it's a weird thing you know windows 11 was not much of an upgrade itself really when you think about it once you get past the ui there's a kind of a handful of things that are pretty useful but i mean nothing sure can i ask a question um, are you yeah. on it right now <laughs> yes, because it's breaking up. Yeah. It is. I've had this problem this week. I don't think it. I think it's my connection. <clears throat> it's twenty-two H two, baby. I think it's the eight. The uh, the hot and hazy, humid. Internet it's the weather problem. The weather and I think 
It's yeah, been our really AC hot. Is, I don't hot, think that's going to do it. <laughs> yeah, this happened yeah. this morning or the other morning. I don't know. It's been hot. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. All right. Well, whatever. It's okay. It seems like it's it better now. It is an irony that my internet connection in Mexico is better than it is here. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Yeah. Yeah. But you feel anyway. confident that 22H2 is reliable enough to actually do this show on. <laughs> He's a fool. What can he say? Yeah. 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 Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not, far be it from me to quail. I never drew a correlation between the build and the problems I'm having, but now that you say that, it's. <laughs> no, why would it have anything to do with that? It's Microsoft software. What are we worried yeah. about? It's always yeah. high quality. Yeah. So, um,. Again, I'll ask the question, should I? <laughs> you talked yesterday, last week about how I could put 22H2 on there, but yes. should I is the... I would. Really? Mm -hmm. Why not, in other words? Yeah. Yeah. You said last week uh, that all the bugs have been fixed. <laughs> I don't know that I said that, but I... I, I <laughs> uh, there's, uh, different things were said. Um, <laughs> things were said. Said. Not all of there's which little, my, he wants to stand behind, but okay, yeah. Yeah, there's little things in it that I kind of like, you know, little, just little little bits, you notice. It's not nothing major. It's it, They really haven't done much to fix some of the things we complained about with, like, the immature taskbar, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, but, this, you know, there's some more start customization things, which I think are nice. The file explorer enhancements are nice. Um Stickers. I know you want the stickers. I, That's stickers is not it. one I've. I can't say I've no. spent too much time with. What are you what get do you spotlight mean? on the desktop? What do you mean by stickers? In your deepest, you darkest imagination, how stupid do you think that could be? Like, <laughs> like, you, like Bugs Bunny, uh, like a little, like, yeah, like graphical that? stickers. A little graphical sticker. To customize your desktop with stickers. Yeah. For what, 11-year-olds? Yeah. You know how sometimes people put a bunch of bumper stickers on the outside of the yeah. car? Yeah. Oh, it's these... Now imagine yeah. you only did that on the inside of your glove box. <laughs> only you could see it sometimes. <laughs> That's what this is like. If you can yeah. read this, you're too close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that is not a feature I would have, uh, <laughs> I would have upgraded for, but, you know. But at least it takes extra steps to get to Task Manager, which, by the way, in 22H2 has been... Visually overhauled for the first time since oh, wow. I don't know Windows ten or Windows eight one. I don't know. It's been a while. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But for normal people, should you be on twenty two H two right now? The answer is no. Are we catering. We are we catering to normal people though? Yes, we should be. <laughs> <laughs> there's not my my point is there's no feature that's really big at this point unless you care about the start menu customization thing, um, and. They're going to keep patching this thing for the next several months. There's some nice snap improvements, which I think are kind of cool. Discoverability improvements. No? Okay. That's fine. The uh, folders look prettier if you have stuff in them. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you're really saying, I believe, is there's no detriment to doing it. So you might as uh, well. Is that what you're, you're just going to be a tester, right? If you do it, you're in the pool of testers. So I shouldn't Good do luck. it. I think Mary Jo's been in the COVID lockdown for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm. I think sometimes it's good to get a little dose of realism on the show. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm confused. Do I want to be a Paul or do I want to be a Mary Jo? Oh boy! I don't Those even think that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, so it will come with, what will it come with? It will come with Windows 11 21H1? 21H2, I guess. 20, there is probably. a 21H2? Okay. Yeah, okay. probably 22H2. That's the first, the first release, yeah. 22H1? No, 2. 21H2. <laughs> Not 22H2, 21H2. Not so 22 h 2 is no the one 21 they just There is no 21H1. Right, there is well, no 21H1. For Windows 11, that's For true. Windows 11. Got for it. Windows 11. So yep. it's it is a Windows 11 machine. I noted that on the box. So uh, yep. Yep. it will be 21H2. Okay. You think 22H2 is that much better that I should probably? What did I, what did I have to do? I have to join the Insider program to get it right. Yeah, that's right. And mm -hmm. and will I then be 
on, on a trail of tears for the rest of the yep. year? Yeah. No, not for the rest of the year. You will be on a trail of tears until 22H2 is formally released to the public, in which case you will just then merge back into the... Then, the, then I will be normal again. Oh, okay. Yep. Which ring is that? <laughs> beta. Beta. So yep. Paul's recommendation is join the beta ring. Mary Jo's recommendation is, what are you, crazy? Yeah. Your, my recommendation is stay on your stable mainstream channel. Yeah. It's so machine you, you would care say about. That. You want to so use it. Diverse. I don't need to be <laughs> fancy. And and mainly this is going to be for the use in the radio show when people ask right. me questions. You want it to be solid, right? I got, like, and I got a normal machine. I didn't get a graphics card. I didn't get I got an i5. Yeah. I, I only yeah. got 16 gigs of RAM. I didn't yeah. go crazy. And that was Paul, that was kind of what you said too. You want to have a kind of a normal yeah. experience. It right. is 12th generation. That's kind of the main thing I'm looking mm -hmm. at. Is there mm -hmm. anything uh, any any software that I would want to, you know, upgrade to to take advantage of the twelfth generation? <laughs> no, I, I actually I'm really curious. Have you tried a twelfth gen chipset yet? No, Have you experienced no. this. Have you? So, I yes. Oh. and I've had the same weird experience with the two computers I've gotten for review so far. Oh, which this is, is interesting. This is why I wanted to yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah, I, the first one I got, I, I thought this something's this isn't right, like something's wrong, and then it happened again on the next one, and there's, I don't know, I I'm, I keep looking for people to say this in a review somewhere. I've never seen anyone else mention this, but the performance is not great right up front. Like there are oh. weird problems, oh. Do, little things that normally you don't think about because they just happen. All of a sudden, the system will kind of freeze and like the window you know, goes blank for a second because it's not, you know, rendering correctly. Huh. And you think you're going to have to start going into task manager and it just comes back. Is it indexing, like, you think? Is it a service? Or I what did it, I, is I, it I heat? Now, did you get an i7? You get i7s probably. Yeah, I think they're both i7s, yeah. So that's one of the reasons I got the i5 because the early benchmarks I've seen show that, seem to it show. actually a little faster. The i5 is a little faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of throttling issues. I think there's a weird, right, right. It's it's the first time they've gone mainstream with this kind of hybrid architecture. Um, Efficiency I, I know that cores Microsoft, and performance cores, a la. Yep. And I know Microsoft's done some work to make that, you know, make sense, but it's it goes away. I mean, it, uh, the first couple of days, it's like, man, something's wrong I with this. I don't think that's and unusual. Then, you probably, you, you know, that I think is not an unusual experience. Uh, I hear from people a lot that, you know, in the first few days, yeah. and that's because of indexing and stuff like no, no, that. No, I, no, I, sure. I, I just, I've just gone so long without thinking about it and not having that experience. Right. I, it's just really struck me. Right. But it's all better now. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Interesting. And were there updates maybe that could have fixed something or it just... There could have been, yeah. I mean, both of these machines were Lenovo's, um, and I do, because I'm me, routinely check the Lenovo Vantage right. app right. for firmware updates and things like that. Um, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll I'll give you a, another data point uh, at some point. As soon as Shanghai, yeah, as soon as Shanghai releases my, my laptop, yeah. it's still... Right. <laughs> I understand the lockdown is ending in Shanghai, which is probably... Oh, really, is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's Probably very good news after 65 days. So, um, just in time for the iPhone 14. Yeah, isn't that yeah. interesting? <laughs> how you gotta wonder how much of the reason they ended the mm -hmm. lockdown was medical and how much of it was economic. Oh, it's just like any other insurance math. How many people need to die before this doesn't make sense? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because it's not like it's all <laughs> over. Oh, yeah, take down the barricades. We we won. Mm. We solved it. Yeah, we solved exactly. it. Mm -hmm. It's not like the virus went away, so I'm puzzled why they're taking the down the barricades, except that they probably realized it was an ill-advised thing anyway in the first place. And people are getting a little upset, right. and it's costing yeah. them a lot of money. 65 days, though. That's, That's a crazy. long mm. time. Mm -hmm. yep. But Quanta, which makes uh, Apple's laptops, was in the shutdown. I don't know who makes Dell's, I'm, but it's coming from China. So, In fact, it says specifically it's coming from Shanghai, because there's a big, I told you last week, a big banner on the page saying we don't know when we're not going to start the mm -hmm. clock yep. until it comes into the u.s mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't look for a tracking number here yeah well i'm just you know i'm getting you can tell i'm getting a little excited you remember last time yeah. i had a windows machine i asked mm -hmm. you peppered you uh with questions <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That'll be happening again. No, I think you got a good one. Like this will be. A I'm nice excited. Machine. I like this. This is one I would consider spending yeah. my own money on yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, I yeah. did. <laughs> and including fifty dollars, I'm excited on the McAfee uh, thing. <laughs> really? I don't remember them asking me. If they had said, "Do you want any, you know, crapware on your machine?" I would have said no. Yeah, that yeah. should be a, a box in the configurator. Yeah. It should. I think it's just a way of adding a little extra, you know, something, something. Oh, oh you wanted that, didn't you? <laughs> that's the entire model, I think, in the PC space. Because yeah, I don't I don't remember. And I think I would have, because I tell people, don't, whatever yeah. you do. Yeah, you wouldn't have chosen that. I would that not if have said, oh, yeah, I really want that. I mean, I guess I could have no. missed, missed a, you know, a checkbox yeah. somewhere, but it, yeah. I don't think I did. There are a couple of little things like that. Mm -hmm. There's like, <laughs> like I I don't remember if I chose the uh, ad advanced support, but they're charging me for that. Oh wow! Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, and I, you know, I guess I I don't normally buy that either, but uh, I I kind of like that you know where they come and you know check you out, check it out. But you have to apparently do a phone call first and all that stuff. So. Right. Anyway, enough about me. What about you? <laughs> how uh, how is uh, how's it going in the uh, world at Casa de Therat? Well, this is the upgrades I was talking about. Yeah, so yeah. I've upgraded all the computers. I haven't touched my wife's computer because you know I'm not insane. But uh, <laughs> although you know, I feel like I've I, I upgraded hers without letting her know. She wouldn't even notice, right? Uh, mm, right. Which is a good uh, reason not to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I get a, you know, this is, I'm, you know, this book that I keep talking about since last year and haven't actually published yet is all going to be based on this version, so. Oh, okay. I the used Field to, Guide to Windows 11 22H2. Well, it will just start with 22H2. I, I just, I, I felt like the uptick was so slow on the first version anyway, and this is the one maybe they should have released, and... I don't know. I've been kind of unexcited yeah. <laughs> about Windows 11 to date, so... Trying to get there. Cool. What's the, um, the status of tabs in File Explorer on this? Thank is you it for there yet? A not question. there, right? Yeah. Not there. Not there. Not there. Yeah, so but could be added at any time, that's, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me, right? Some random month this yeah. year yep. just kind of appears. I mean, there could even right. be one of those day one type updates where this thing. Mm -hmm. you know, ships in September, whatever it is. Yeah. And then is that a hotly anticipated uh, update? So many people care. I don't know. Tabs why. in File Explorer. They do. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, this has been, well, remember they were going to have sets in Windows 10 and then right. they pulled that. There was some problem. And that was yeah. actually a pretty aggressive feature because that was going to be tabs in any window, including application windows like Word and Excel, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. I thought that was, uh, that was curiously far reaching. So just adding tabs to individual apps to me makes sense. I don't see why they can't do it with File Explorer, but hey, we have stickers, so that will just tie you know, keep you tied it over until Exactly. <laughs> until we get tabs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Yep. All right. Well, this yep. is uh, this is definitely the juiciest Windows Weekly in a long time. Uh, <laughs> it's a rough week. We've got the holiday plus week after build. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, Leo, we're like scrapping here. Week. What do you want? It's all right. Hey, we're scrapping. There was I had to do Mac Break Weekly yesterday, and there's oh, man. you know the yeah. day the week before an yeah, Apple event, yeah. nothing. That's rough. And yeah. they managed to get two and a squeeze two and a half hours out of it. Of course, there's wow three of them, and there's only two of you, so. Yeah, Spotify. Seventy three minutes, I think. Yeah, <laughs> do the math. Yeah, Spotify yeah. releases a native ARM version of its client on Windows. For 10 11. some reason, I hope I put it yeah. in the notes. Um, yeah, I don't quite. <laughs> you know, so the issue just uh, just to restate this, the obvious, I guess. Um, most applications in the Windows space are x eighty six, x sixty four, right? Sixty four bit x eighty six. Probably these days, um, ARM can emulate that and does, and it's mm -hmm. okay. You know, it's not great. It's it's fine. Um, I, I guess the theory here is if they do a native ARM version, it will be better performance. I guess I don't know. So <laughs> it's just a beta. You have to go to a particular. I think it's like their support <laughs> website, community website, 
Um, you have to uninstall the x86 version if you've installed that. I assume that includes the store version. Eventually, I'm sure the store version will just give you that ARM64 version. And maybe that's, maybe that's the point right there. Um, if you do install this version, you won't be able to play video podcasts. So that's a temporary condition, but just so you know. Um, I, I, I feel like we could safely call out every single time any OEM or, or ISV, I guess, uh, releases an ARM64 version of anything. Because <laughs> it doesn't really happen yeah. all that often. But, yeah. uh, but, you know, Spotify is obviously a big deal. What does it mean? Does it mean uh, mainstream support for ARM is coming? Uh, I don't even want to take that risk <laughs> of saying that. I'm not really okay. sure what it means. It's interesting they would devote... Yeah. Uh, resources to it. I mean, Microsoft yeah. had a partnership with Spotify. Remember yeah. when they discontinued no, Groove, right? And they started yeah. telling people to use Spotify instead. So maybe that's why. Maybe they were like, you know what? Let's let's give them a little, let's firm a bone. Let's do a native uh, Windows on ARM. Because <laughs> it's not Spotify for usage, is, right? There's nobody using these PCs. Yeah. No, I mean, but the, Spotify, the, there's a, I don't know what you call this, but there's a weird little group of apps that are not really installed, but they're in your start menu. In yeah. the third party mm -hmm. apps, right? And they yep. can vary from computer to computer. But on this computer, I see Spotify, I see Disney Plus, I see Prime Video, Amazon Prime yep. Video, and I see TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it, yeah. And I, th there's uh, some partnership going on there. I don't know what mm -hmm. the deal is or how it works, but I have never clicked on Disney Plus, but I know if I do now, it will install it from the store and then the app will come up, right? That It's like yeah. a... Mm -hmm. I don't know what you call that. It's a partnership thing. So maybe as a condition of getting yourself in front of every Windows user yeah. like that, mm -hmm. you might mm -hmm. have to at least show you're right. working on an ARM version. That yeah, might be I bet you're right. That makes a lot of sense. That that's just guessing. Like a good I, reason. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. No idea. It's like mini crapware. Like not full on <laughs> crapware, right. but it's, it's like half right. there, not really it's there till you press the crapware. button. <laughs> exactly. Right. It's yeah. crapware as a service, is what it is. It is. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Okay. That's my guess, but I don't. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Know. I bet. I, I bet know. you're right because either, that's an advertising play to get your app it featured, right? If somebody yeah. hasn't already yeah, yeah. downloaded it. It's not, I mean, look, for a non-complicated app, Spotify is a complicated app, but, you know, for a simple app, yeah. it's a, you can basically check a box in Visual Studio, recompile, mm -hmm. and you get a native ARM version. It's automatic. Yeah. You put it in the store. You don't really have to do any work. I mean, you should mm -hmm. test it, obviously, but, like, you know, that kind of thing should just <laughs> yeah. work. Um, mm -hmm. An application like Spotify or the Office applications or Visual Studio soon, these are big, complex applications, mm -hmm. so it's going to require some testing. But, you know, if you want to, yeah. I guess... Yeah, you know, that's a that's my theory. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like it. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, do you want well let's take a break and then we will get to the earnings mm -hmm. from uh let's see how much Dell more Dell made thanks to charging me forty nine dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they actually called <laughs> you up by name in their earnings uh, announcement. Yeah. Leo they, gave they, us they said a... we wanted to thank Leo Laporte yeah, yeah. for subsidizing uh, really, the company for that three changed months. the bottom line. <laughs> Big time, mm -hmm. big time. Our uh, show today, I'm very happy to say, is brought to you by userway.org. In fact, if you go to our website, you will notice something kind of relatively new uh, at the bottom of our website. There's a little button there uh, for uh, accessibility. And I'm, very, I'm actually really proud of that. We put that there so that everybody can use our website. And uh, I got to thank the folks at UserWay org for making that possible let me uh, let me give you a little tour of what userway can do userway.org I'm talking about making your website ADA compliant accessible not only is it the right thing to do because you're opening up your website to a much larger group 60 million plus people you have a responsibility to make your site accessible it's a public entity so you got to make it accessible and with userway it's easy. That was my biggest concern was, oh, I can't afford it or it's going to be too hard. No, UserWay is really affordable and it's really easy. An incredible, it's AI powered. It tirelessly enforces all the accessibility guidelines, the WCAG, WCAG guidelines. And I love this, so do our engineers. It's one line of JavaScript. That's it. Because UserWay is so good, it's used by more than a million websites, including the big guys, Coca-Cola, 
Disney, eBay. These are companies that really have to be accessible, and UserWay can do that. As you get bigger, they scale with you. If they can handle Disney, absolutely they can handle you. They make best-in-class, enterprise-level accessibility tools available to you, your small or medium-sized business. And then as you scale, you need UserWay, and you're ready. It just makes business sense. Some of the biggest problems, nav menus, very difficult. So the way this works, if you're blind or you're using accessibility tools, there is what they call an accessibility layer. That's what the screen reader sees. So really what UserWay does is make sure that all the information available to the front page to the sighted user is available to the browser in the accessibility layer. It changes colors. Now you've got your Pantone color for your business. Of course, we do too. It doesn't change that but it adjusts hue and luminance so it's easier for people with vision issues to read. So UserWay will generate alt tags. That's one of the reasons it needs AI. It can actually see the picture and generate an alt tag that matches the picture automatically. You can go in if you want. You can modify it, of course. It fixes violations like vague links, fixes broken links, makes sure that your website uses accessible colors, and you'll get a detailed report of all the violations that were fixed on your website so you know exactly what it did. Plus, you can work with it. UserWay integrates seamlessly with your site builder software. Let UserWay help your business meet its compliance goals, improve the experience for your users. UserWay can make any website fully accessible, ADA compliant, and everyone who visits can browse seamlessly, customize it to fit their needs. It's a great way to show your brand's commitment to the millions of people with disabilities. It's the right thing to do. UserWay, it can make any website fully accessible, and ADA compliant with UserWay, everyone who visits your site can browse seamlessly and customize it to fit their needs. It's also a perfect way to showcase your brand's commitment to millions of people with disabilities. Go to userway.org slash twit and you'll get 30% off UserWay's AI-powered accessibility solution. UserWay, making the internet accessible for everyone. Visit userway.org slash twit today. Now... Let us talk about uh, results, quarterly results. How'd the how'd the yeah. how'd my little how'd my company do? <laughs> Your company did great. Did they? So and yeah, thanks, Dell thanks and Lenovo, me. yeah, both reported uh, quarterly earnings. They're, they're kind of on off quarters. Like uh, Dell's quarter ended on April 29th, <laughs> two thousand twenty-two or two thousand two. There, that's good. Uh, and that's then a month Lenovo ago. actually did. Yeah, well, it's always kind of a month behind. It's oh, okay. more typical for a quarterly uh, earn or a quarter, a fiscal quarter. To March thirty first, March. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. The you know, Lenovo's calendar did, uh, but that was also yeah. They, yeah. they, you know, how those things vary. So, but Lenovo and Dell both just announced record revenues actually in both cases, right? So, sixteen uh, percent uh, gain for Dell to twenty six point one billion dollars in the quarter ending uh, Jan or April twenty ninth. So it's over 50%, but over 50% of uh, their business is related to PCs. And thanks to what they described as continued strength in commercial PC sales, um, those folks, that part of the business, just commercial PC sales was 12, 12 billion in revenues. Uh, consumer PC revenues was 3.3 billion. So tw up 22% PCs, commercial PC sales. Wow. Just commercial PC wow. sales, like by revenue. Um, so this is sort of deflating my theory that the COVID era boom is over. Yeah, um, because Lenovo, mm -hmm. which is the world's biggest maker of uh, computers, also record revenue for both the quarter and the year. Right, mm -hmm. um, this revenues of seventy one point six billion. This is for the year, uh, eighteen up eighteen percent um, year over year. Their their PC business up thirty percent year over year. <laughs> it's like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like I. Neither one of them gave a like a unit, you know, sale kind of figure, but just by revenue, like their PC businesses are going gangbusters. They both have other businesses, obviously, but in both cases, the PC part of it is the biggest part. Do you think it's maybe, huh? Maybe businesses are saying, "Uh oh, hybrid. Uh, we better yeah. buy laptops for people." Mm -hmm. Well, forced to um, kind of retreat from my previous position. Yes, I agree with that one hundred percent. I sort of thought, I thought this is, I figured we were going to level out again, but um, yeah. Well, yeah, but we, and, but we thought people would be going, going back to the office again, and mm -hmm. that's tr mm -hmm. proving to that's be right. not. A uh, mixed bag. Yeah, a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. Although you saw yeah. Elon Musk's memo. 
to his employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the executives you're working somewhere else. Is no, that what yeah, saying? he said you must be in the office forty hours a week, or I'm going to fire you. And mm -hmm. don't pretend to don't go to some satellite office that has nothing to do with your your <laughs> right. department. You got to go to your department. Mm -hmm. Wow, he's so forward looking. You know, yeah. the guy is like a, <laughs> really a progressive uh, <laughs> genius. I think is the word I would use. Um, yeah. So would he. Yeah. So would he. Yeah. So yeah. would he. He's a genius. Just ask him. So would he. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I think is up with this PC demand too is there are a lot mm -hmm. of older PCs in the market, right? Like, yeah. like I forget what percentage of PCs are older than five years, but it's still wow. a really big number, right? And oh, that's definitely true. Yeah. So the, maybe like it, a lot of people are like, it's time to upgrade these, right? Like these are. Well, uh, there have been these into. cycles in the past, right, that were kind of tied to yeah. different versions of Windows. Like Windows mm -hmm. 7 was just timed great. Yeah. It just it went was. gangbusters. We know that story. Um, Windows 10 followed Windows 8. Again, mm -hmm. uh, that actually coincided with a weird downturn in the PC biz. But the, but despite some shenanigans on Terry Larson's part, <laughs> um, Windows 10 uptick yeah. was actually very fast. And, and rightfully so. I mean, Windows 8 was mm -hmm. garbage and... People wanted to get past that. Plus, the support time cycle, or, uh, support yeah. life cycle for Windows Seven was ending, so that made sense. But you know, then they kept Windows uh, Ten in the market for like six years, uh, yeah. which, by the way, is longer than XP was in the market as the only mm -hmm. new version of Windows, right? Which at the time right. was an incredible thing, and it was really bad. You know, we'll never do that again. You know, but they kept yeah. Windows Ten around, and uh, I was just, you know, by the way, I was just writing about that part of it. I was reliving our confusion at that January 2015 event where they mm -hmm. said that Windows 10 would be supported for the lifetime of the device. And everyone looked at each other like, what, is that? what does that mean? Like, what, that, that's not a, that doesn't <laughs> they mean They never anything. have said what it means. No, they never, ever. no. But, you know, it opened a loophole for them to be able to do things yeah. like midstream when they had the problem with Skylake and Intel, they could mm -hmm. go back and say, well, Intel, we wanted yeah. Intel to support these people. They won't do it. Now we're not going to support older Intel chipsets on Windows mm -hmm. 10. That gave them their, well, we said it was supported for the lifetime of the device. Well, now the yeah. lifetime of the device is up. Um, mm -hmm. But they, you're right. They never explained that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that combined with the the whole pandemic a couple of years, and then now we're in this yeah. hybrid era. Yeah, a lot of PCs out there. That, By the way, it, I think it worked fine. They've, they PCs are mm -hmm. more reliable than they've ever been. They last a long time. Yeah. But, you know, the, the quad core thing happened uh, four-ish years ago. Now we're going to this mm -hmm. hybrid core uh, situation. We're finally getting, you know, uh, full HD webcams, you know, mm -hmm. modern ports, all this stuff. I mean, uh, an upgrade these days would probably good, be good for a lot of people. So, yeah, I thought it was going to go south, but <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. anyway, that's, mm -hmm. but businesses, that's what's happened. Do business, okay, so do businesses think that way? Like, oh, this would be good, you know, you'd have. No, no. No, no, no business has ever said we think this would be good. We don't care what but the user experience <laughs> no. is. They, well, they, I mean, look, I, they care about security. Maybe that's an important thing. They yeah. care about, yeah. right. um, obviously, for some uh, staff, like, you know, where productivity is important, like your yeah. engineers, maybe you want to make yeah. sure you have a very fast machine. Right. But for, for frontline workers, for office workers, no. I don't think they care. No, I think it depends on the business, right? Like small yeah. businesses, less so, oh, yeah, right? Because they don't want to spend yeah. the money, it's expensive. right? Right. But it's, a lot of businesses like to touch things once. They talk about one touch. So they want to upgrade right. Windows, Office, and the hardware all together, all right? Once. Like that makes that's sense. the goal, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Or do it. I mean, not even do that if they yeah. can. Ship it yeah. to the customer, uh, the mm -hmm. end user, have them log in with their corporate credentials. Yep. And then have all those policies come down, kind of a zero touch True. situation. We yeah. are editors' machines. They all use uh, Dell uh, workstations. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a little getting a little superannuated. They were running Windows eight, mm -hmm. so um, we bought all new machines. But you know, it's taken. Russell's got it. He's got them all lined up on a desk, and he's got it. <laughs> it's taken him weeks to kind of yeah. configure them all, get them all just right, just so. Uh, get right. everything working, and then he's going to put it in. But you're right, touch once. He doesn't want to go back mm -hmm. and and mess with that. It's going to. In fact, that's why we're still running Windows 8 because it was all set up. It was perfect. There was no reason to change. Yeah. Wow, right. I can't believe you guys are running Windows 8 still. Ooh. Well, now we're Windows 11. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. 
Uh, you know, we use Adobe Premiere, and actually the editors probably rarely exit Premiere, right? So mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. see the operating system right. that much. Right. But I understand that. But, uh, but you know, that gives you some idea of how long we waited. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, is that 10 years, 8 years? You don't, you don't fix something that works. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't. Right. Not you don't, because you're cheap even, true. but because you don't. No. It's yeah. working. You don't yeah, like the Dell so, I had. Yeah, I actually, had it for that's 10 really years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one, one of the, so again, I've just been writing about this, but one of the promises for Windows 10, and this was something directed at both individuals and businesses, was this notion that upgrades are seamless now. You know, everyone has this notion in their head, like you can't upgrade from one version to another because something will go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of an enterprise or a big business, obviously that would just be, have to do with complexity, not that probably there'd be huge problems, but... Uh, for individuals, I think a lot of people, anyone who had ever heard this notion of upgrading Windows, it probably would have said, no, this is, I, I don't know yeah. why I know this, but this, I know this is horrible. Yeah. And they tried to <laughs> sell this notion that it wasn't horrible anymore. And uh, the way they pushed that home was to <laughs> ship like 36 upgrades a year. But um, <laughs> anyway, they went yeah. kind of went overboard there. But yeah. uh, it's interesting to me that your business actually skipped <laughs> Windows 10. Um, which, you know, I honestly is probably the most successful version of Windows that has ever been released just by volume, you know. I think it's just the accident of the calendar of when we mm. bought. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I, mm -hmm. You know, we bought those because Apple had uh, screwed up uh, Final Cut Pro and taken out a feature that we had to have. So we had, the, mm. before that, they had Mac Pros. So we replaced the Mac Pros with the Dell Precision Workstation. So that, yeah, that's got to be almost 10 years ago. And we just, and there was no reason to move. They were fast enough. They were good mm -hmm. enough, and gosh darn it, people liked it. So <laughs> we just we stayed with it. Yeah. Um, and I guess that that's what was happening. Things were starting to fail, or I, I don't. You know, there was some triggering event, and right. uh, and then you go, you look at the budget, and you say, well, how much is that going to cost? And it's a lot of money. These are probably oh, yeah. five so or got, six or seven thousand each. I don't know what they are, and there's six of them. Yep. Uh, five or six of them. You got several years of use out of them. I mean, it's yeah. We got our we we you know. And we're mm -hmm. like any small business. We're not uh, fat, you know. We're, uh, yeah. You know, we're not Google, where you know, yeah, good. You know, you're gonna. We gotta have the latest. I get the latest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, <laughs> our ho well, our hosts do because they're yeah. talking about yeah. that stuff. But um, so with the hosts all get upgrades. You know, every right. few years, right. not all the time, not yeah. as much as me. Yep. <laughs> I get a sure. new thing at the drop of a hat. But uh, <laughs> I am spending my money as opposed to yeah. everybody else. They're spending my money. <laughs> so, so, uh, but uh, I just, I think it was working fine and it, it, until it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then we replace it. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and I think that's the way any small business is going to work. If you're a really I rich, guess, fat business, maybe not. But, but any business is going to be, that's just sensible. Yeah, biz businesses mm -hmm. are not tied to Windows releases. They don't we care don't about care. that stuff. Uh, no. For the most part, I, I I think in my head, I guess what I was going through was just this notion that, like I said, there were there were these super cycles that occurred for various yeah. reasons. Windows Seven was one, and Windows Ten was one. And so when you look at Windows Eleven, you think, well, objectively, this doesn't do enough to push the needle. Why would anyone upgrade en masse? Mm -hmm. And the real reason is it's not so much Windows Eleven, although maybe that was a little bit of a push for people, it's just you know better visuals, whatever. But it literally has been <laughs> over six years mm -hmm. since they released the first mm -hmm. version of Windows 10. And that's a really mm -hmm. long time in the scope of mm -hmm. any version of Windows. Uh, like I yeah. said, I, it's been in market longer than any version of Windows had been without being replaced by a new version. You know, like mm -hmm. Windows XP was released in 2001 and then Vista came out in the end of 2006. So that was yeah. only, you know, five years. And at, at the you time, know, it, so it felt like, you know, forever. Yeah. I feel like in the older days, people used to think about, okay, if a new version of Windows comes out, we'll get new hardware to go with it. Now I feel like it's more yeah. about the end of support, right? Oh, so yes, yes. Around 2025, yep. when Windows 10 goes out of support, there should be a pretty big yeah. surge in PC sales, I would think. Right? So that was yeah, going to be my question that was, it, did Windows 11 do what Microsoft, I think, really wanted it to do? Was that why PC sales yeah. are, are up? But I, <laughs> I think don't think it has, because so. honestly, no. Windows 11, no. no, just based on the percentages that we see for Windows 11 out in the world. Although the next story, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of contrary information, mm -hmm. uh, which I actually don't agree with. But I, okay. I, I, I think, I really think it's, you know, businesses do their own thing on their own, like you, your business, right? They so do. It's, right. you're on this several year upgrade path. 
And I think with window because of the Windows 10, they finally kind of came out and said, all right, look, we're gonna, we are going to support Windows 10 for 10 years. Right. They never mm -hmm. said that in the beginning. They didn't say that until yeah. last year, I think. And uh, oh, surprise. Yeah. We, oh, no, we were always going to do that. We were just kidding about the whole life cycle of the device. Thing. <laughs> and I don't know what that was about. But yeah. I... I I don't think that's enough to get, you know, businesses like, eh, who cares, whatever. Okay, fine. Yeah. And now, now they're like, but, but now it's going to expire, like Mary Jo said. So I think between now and then, what we're going to see is a, a few years of these corporate type mm -hmm. upgrades. Um, I think, on their I think own they schedules. wanted. I don't think, not driven I by think Windows they, 11, right? No, I think Windows 11, they wanted to try to push people to buy new PCs. And the way they mm -hmm. did that was by adding those CPU and TPU requirements. And they're saying, okay, let's force some hardware to be obsolete for people, right? And that will make uh, make people say, right. okay, if we do want Windows 11, we're going to have to buy new hardware. And I think that hasn't really happened en masse yet. But when you're looking to upgrade so, going forward, you'll be like, oh, wait, I can't run Windows 11 on this because of the CPU, TPU thing. And Windows 10 is expiring. And right, two, right. Like you're getting years. like squeezed kind of, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For Maybe. sure. I, I just. Yeah. So I I don't remember what happened after this was announced, but when Windows 10 came out, TPM 1.2 or 2.0 were optional mm -hmm. features. At that time, Microsoft said in one year, TPM 2.0 will be required. Now I'm guessing that never mm -hmm. happened because when Windows 11 shipped, <laughs> TPM 2.0 was required, and it hit the fan at that point, right? So yeah. I'm guessing they got pushback then, and this is something they've wanted to do for several years, and they're finally yeah. doing it with Windows 11, getting everyone on board. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Leo's computers, I don't know exactly what they are, what gen Intel processor they have, et cetera, et cetera. But like I said, we're, we're actually at the point where, you know, the PC industry kind of moves slowly with regards to innovative new, you know, anything hardware related. But... Mm -hmm. You want to talk like six, seven years and compare the chipset that's in there, the speed of the RAM, the type of graphics card you can get, how integrated graphics now are actually excellent or can be excellent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the port situation, like I said, Thunderbolt 4 it was not a thing, you know, five to seven years ago. Um, that's a pretty good upgrade all of a sudden. You know, it yeah. was a pretty good upgrade mm -hmm. when Intel went from dual core to quad core with the eighth gen. Now we're in 12th gen and now they're going hybrid mm -hmm. core. Um, I just, I... It is fair to say that computers have changed a lot. Yeah, battery life mm -hmm. is still terrible. <laughs> it but, is. but yes, as far it is. as the how about the twelfth generation? Kind of Are you getting better battery life on uh, on your uh, Lenovo's? No, not that I've seen. Oh, so that's far. disappointing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, Judge Judy has just come into the courtroom. <laughs> and, oh yeah. And she talked to the jury and said, "You didn't finish your job. You got to finish filling out the forms." So she has oh, really? sent them back into the jury me. room oh, man. to fill out the what they consider oh. would be compensatory damages. Wow. They didn't <laughs> write in any amount. So yeah. uh, jury's oh, back, interesting. and they're back. That's to basically what Senor Anse told me. I didn't yeah. finish filling out a you, form. <laughs> Senor, you have not <laughs> filled, filled out the compensatory <laughs> damages. We need to know <laughs> damages. We right. don't need no damages. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. Um, anyway, I'll, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know that we are keeping on top of the big stories of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Following it closely. Right, we're Following just treading water it. with this PC nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she really does look like Judge Judy, too, by the way. I just, you know, it's not. Uh, it's, <laughs> I, maybe it is Judge Judy. I don't know. Uh, she's, you know, she's off the air. She it's her has, sister. It's her twin. Sister. It's her digital twin. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an entertainment industry <laughs> thing, so. Um, did you talk about the Edge uh, story? No. No, so. I think that's kind of interesting. I do too. So yeah. the, the headline here is this. This came from a company I've never heard of, Atlas VPN, and they're they're really using data from from two different places, and then they're coming up with raw numbers for how many browser users there are in the world. So it's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. We know that like Stat Counter, for example, will give us percentages for web browsers and also desktop operating systems and things like that. They call it market share. That's actually usage share, but. The idea is that like 65% of the web is, you know, a web users browse with Chrome. Like we know that, right? But how many Chrome users are there, right? And uh, they went to, where's the data where they got this from? They, the, they used what they called Internet World Stats, Internet User Metric, 
So they used these two stats and they converted them into numbers, like raw numbers. And so what they found was that there's like 3.4 almost billion people using Google Chrome. And that Safari just this month surpassed 1 billion. So, so far, Apple Safari is the second web browser to have over a billion users, right? Which is an incredible number. Mm -hmm. 900 something, <laughs> you know, thousand of those are, are obviously on iOS or iPad OS. Uh, and then some number on Mac or whatever. But, you know, the, Safari is an Apple-only product. I mean, it kind of shows you Apple's reach right there. It's incredible. But down there at number three, right, we knew that Edge had <laughs> surpassed Firefox usage um, within the last month or two. 200, and we're going to call it 213 million people are using Microsoft Edge. They're in third place, a so distant third, to be sure. Uh, but ahead of Firefox, which is about 179 million um, and it, uh, Samsung Internet, which only runs on Android mobile devices, is not quite 150 million. And then Opera is at about 109 million. Okay. So some numbers. That's kind of neat. And you can see the chart and how big things are. But this was the commentary that they had about Edge. Hmm. The, <laughs> it's like, it's, I just disagree with this. But anyway, since the release of Windows 11, Microsoft set it as the default browser on all devices and made it difficult for users to change to their preferred option. That's true. That is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. We complained about that. Uh, Microsoft has made it a little bit easier. In fact, that's one of the features that's in uh, 22H2, right? The, the, oh, yeah, true. You know, the, the yep. default Single you button. Know, option, yep. which is, yeah, which isn't 100%, but, you know, it's mostly what people want. Yeah. Therefore, they continue, Edge received a significant increase in its user base. Yeah, not really, right? Like, Windows 11 isn't yeah. really on that many computers. Like, it's not... I don't, I don't, I, I, this is, this is, I think we all understand this notion of the power of defaults, right? Mm -hmm. But I also think that, I was just thinking about the Think about 20 years ago, Microsoft w was found guilty of sweeping antitrust violations, right? The key complaint was that Microsoft bundled Internet Explorer into Windows and they did it in such a way to harm com uh, competitors. They deeply integrated this system into Windows for no good reason, which, by the way, is absolutely true. And they did it because they wanted there be, to be no way to tear out Internet Explorer. Like, you'd be forced to use Internet Explorer. The thing is, <laughs> if as a user, you could use Internet Explorer to install Firefox at the time or Chrome later or whatever browser and use that instead. Like, there was, there's, no, there's no problem doing that in Windows ever, including back then. And yet, that was a huge problem. Today, Microsoft, if flash forward 20 years, antitrust is focused on Google and Apple, Facebook maybe, Meta, whatever. And we'll, we'll screw around a little bit here, see if anyone notices. <laughs> you know, like they're back, at, they're, they're back to kind of these dirty tricks again. They made it hard in mm -hmm. Windows 11. Now, Windows 11 is not on that many different, uh, many computers. By the time it is on a lot of computers, it will be just, well, not exactly just, but it will be much like it was before. You can click a button, default browser, you're all set. You can use anything you want. So, I mean, compared to like, you know, iOS, where, yeah, you can use a different browser, and yeah, you can set it as the default, but you're using their browser under the covers. Like, you can't not use their browser. Um, what they've done, even what they've done in Windows 11, as much as it offends me, is not all that bad. I mean, comparatively speaking, I think it's terrible, but I think it's just mean <laughs> because it just, it just hurts normal people. I don't even understand what the point of it is. Um, but to, to say that like Edge surpassed the usage of Firefox because of this tactic is you have to pretend that Firefox hasn't been on the decline for the past several years, right? Like mm. every year mm. Firefox usage has been going down. So, I mean... Which hurt, uh, hurts me, by the way. Yeah, uh, I'm on an active campaign to get everybody to use Firefox. I don't know why people right. are turning away from yeah. Firefox. Hmm. Um, I, can, I mean, I can't. I can only speak to my own experience. I think what I've noticed using Firefox is that it doesn't perform as well. I don't and, find that to be true. Um, yeah, see, I've, I always that's always the one that gets me. But the, there are little differences in the way it does things, like downloads and right click, to, or like the uh, developer tools, which I used to get images for articles. Or it's just uh, a bunch of little things. It's little things. It doesn't. Yeah. Well, I can kind understand of that. Away from PWAs, which I don't understand. Mm. Um, they, yeah, that they, bothers they, they me. But Apple's not there either. So it's no, really Chrome sure. and Microsoft, or Google and Microsoft. So. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I was gonna, okay. Actually, my uh, the point I wanted to make earlier was simply I don't know that the power of defaults applies anymore when it comes to web browsers. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it ever applied. Well, maybe back in two thousand it did, right? It is so easy to install another browser. Like the one thing, the biggest success of Chrome, I think, has been getting people to forget that there's a browser on the computer, right? And that they know in their heads mm -hmm. that's, that's the first right. thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yep, go yeah. get Chrome, and. Maybe that explains Microsoft's behavior, by the way, because in their eyes, they've created something that's just about the same as Chrome, and why not just use mm -hmm. ours? And, you know, fair enough. But um, I, this notion that, you know, by the power of the defaults, Microsoft has, you know, kind of sneakily uh, raised their engagement. It's like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, don't I, think, I think you're underestimating maybe how many mm -hmm. normal people just don't change the browser right. on the PC. Oh, that's right? the thing. The so, defaults are the defaults. Which although yeah, what happens is, are. no, your kids come home for Christmas or a long weekend, and they're like, "Mom, you don't have you don't have Chrome on this." Like the the kids put it on the parents' PC. I don't think it's so. I, I'm cases. not. I I just this is a weird coincidence, but just today, my neighbor emailed me or texted mm -hmm. me. Sorry. Which I would just read to you, but I, you know, I'm using my phone for this. But he said, he <laughs> right. said, I installed an update to Windows 8.1. He's still on Windows 8.1, and we had this conversation, wow. him and mm -hmm. I. So he's still on Windows 8.1, um, and it erased all of my Chrome bookmarks. Mm -hmm. So even this guy, who's 65, 70 years old, retired, yep. not particularly tech savvy, um, uses it's Chrome. Chrome. Now, yeah. he has a kid. I know his kid goes to MIT. Maybe his kid was the one who said someday, 10 years ago, you got to mm -hmm. run Chrome. I don't know. But I mean, even this well, guy. Well, Google, I know. think Google, uh, speaking of dirty tricks, Google yeah. re resorts to all sorts of tricks to get you to use Chrome, including, right. I mean, I go yeah. to websites, uh, including yeah. uh, my employer at Premier Networks, where they say, well, you need Chrome if you want to watch this uh, slideshow that mm -hmm. we're requiring. So I'm right. not surprised to hear that. I mean, I think Google yeah. does yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah, they do, the, the, for sure. They push you to Chrome, <laughs> just as Microsoft yeah. pushes you to Edge. I've never yeah. heard anyone complain about Google's business tactics, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You know, maybe. I don't know. Except that Gmail man guy, <laughs> but other than that, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. I just don't know. I, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I think what's going to, what could bite Microsoft in the end and um, our friend Rich Woods, who works at XDA Developers, just wrote an editorial about this. He, mm -hmm. he said, um, Edge started out as a really good browser. I loved it. I was running it, advising yeah, people to use it. They've junked yep. it up so much that I just right. don't even tell people they should use it anymore because it's so full of like pop-ups for shopping and this right. and that. And yes, you can turn them off. And I so, do because I'm, I'm an Edge user. But this is a little... Just, just you know what the, the irony is there <laughs> is that, it, as you recall, the original code name for Edge was Project Spartan. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of the Windows 10 code names were kind of Halo related, right? Like Threshold right. was the code name for Windows 10, which was a planet that was sort of in Halo. It wasn't really a central part of Halo, but it was in Halo. And Spartan, of course, is the name of the type of character that Master Chief is. But Spartan also has a different meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Yep. And Spartan has a more general meaning. And when, when Edge first came out, it was a Spartan web browser. They did have a couple mm -hmm. of, um, that's the non-Chromium version, but they obviously had like features that were unique to Windows, like inking and stuff like that, mm -hmm. annotations and, and nice PDF features and that kind of stuff. But that was all very productivity focused. It made sense. Yeah. It was, we can have this debate about things that should be extensions and things that should just be built in. And I felt like with the original Edge in particular, the things that were built in kind of made sense as in-browser mm -hmm. features. I think yep. the mistake they've made with Chromium is after making this shift, which they did great, they started piling on the, the crap that yep. Rich is referring to, which is absolutely correct. Yep. They, there's a, so there's a feature in um, uh, Edge today called Collections, which supposedly came right from Joe Belfiore. He's like, I was planning a trip and I didn't mm -hmm. have any way to do this and how can I can collect all this information, blah, 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 whatever. And whatever you think of collections, I mean, there's a handful of people that probably love it and use it, and there's a bunch of people who probably ignore it and don't even know what it is and couldn't care less. Um, whatever. But the point of collections is when you make collections of these either web pages or parts of web pages, they persist across different installs. They, they, they sync. Mm -hmm. And now there's a feature coming to, it's in uh, Canary, which I've just forgotten the name, but I think it's just called, it's got a name like oh, Drop yeah. or... It does. Um, drop stuff over into a panel, something. right? Yeah. Well, the idea is you 
you try to save information <laughs> online and yeah. you want it to sync between your different PCs. It's like, guys, we have this feature. I know. We already have it. <laughs> why? why it's called collections. You're, make, you're, <laughs> you're putting another one of these things in there? Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No, I, I feel like... I feel like there's all different teams giving them input, right? Like I, I feel like this drop thing that you're describing maybe came from the tasks and notes team. Like the people who thought sticky notes would be a big thing um, for Microsoft. And now they're like, sure. what if, what if instead of like having to pin things on a sticky note, you could just drop it in your browser. The browser is just beca because the browser is the most used app and it's the front, it's where you sit all day. If you're a PC user, you're in your browser, right? I, I feel like they're just like, let's add this to the browser. Cause that will get more people to try this, right? And I think it's a mistake. I, I, I do. <laughs> again, I can only project and sort of try to understand why things happen the way they happen. But one of the big steps back in Windows 11 is they got rid of this notion of pervasive sync, uh, settings sync, right, between yep. computers. So right. like one of the very, just one of the simplest things you could possibly imagine is I have a desktop wallpaper I love. It's a picture of my family. I want that thing to appear on every computer. I can check a box and there it is. That's gone. It's not in Windows 11. And I wonder if this sort of computer to computer sync feature that's coming to Edge isn't yeah. an acknowledgement that we're losing sync features in the operating system. Oh, and Edge runs on Mac and yeah. uh, Linux and wherever up mobile where these things don't exist anyway. And maybe that's the rationale. I'm not defending it, but... Yeah. You have to wonder, like, what's the impetus for this idea? Plus, you already have something that's kind of a lot like it, you know, already. But yeah, yeah. You, you I keep have going to back to no. You know what? I keep going back to. There's this team at Microsoft called WebXT, Web Experiences Team. Their yeah. job is to take Edge, the MSN news feed start thing, um, right. Bing, ads, and mush them all together. And like use the power of Edge to to get more users for Bing and more users for um, oh, advertising man. and Microsoft Search so, and like that's their job, right? <laughs> you, you've said two things which sound religious to me, which is like the power of Edge compels you, and also those people are doing the devil's work, <laughs> yeah. right? You're right. you're you're saying. This We've is got this job. group of users that want to, <laughs> I, right, that's what I mean. Like you've signed, this is what yeah. every day, nine to five, this is what you do. Yeah. You've got yep. people using your product and you th all you can think of is how do I get them in front of other Microsoft services? Yeah. I, no, I, I just gross. saw a job posting for them this week that said, our job is to get users through Edge to engage in shopping, news, mm -hmm. And gaming. Like that, this is what they see Edge as, like the portal to getting more users on those Microsoft services. That's what they're doing, and it's wrong. I hate this it. The, I hate the, that they're okay. junking this up. <laughs> yeah, the reason I, this bothers me mostly, other than the obvious, is they, they do this from time to time, and then they give up on this stuff, right? Yeah, so one of the core right. features of the original version of Edge was that Cortana was going to show up. Remember Cortana right. was an Edge? So you yeah. went to a restaurant's website... And Cortana would be like, hey, I got you covered. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know when they're open? Do you want to see their menu? That kind of thing. A little bit yeah, Cortana. That's thing. somewhat useful. And, yeah. Yep. But then they said, and we're going to do this with more types of websites in the future. And you know what they did? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it never expanded past that. That It never got, and now it's just gone. Yeah. And, you know, plumbing a website for the information that you're really looking for, I guess we could kind of quibble over whether, you know, that's ethical or whatever, but it, it's, it's, it's useful to people for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, piling crap in a browser that has nothing yeah. to do with what anyone's doing. People launch this thing for reasons. And I don't, I, I guess one of those reasons is shopping for sure. I mean, I, right. we definitely mm -hmm. shop, but do we, yeah. I mean, isn't that what's wrong with this world? <laughs> like, why would you make it easier? I, I don't know. Is yeah. it too hard? Is one click too hard? I mean, is Edge making it like half a click? Uh, what is what is Edge adding? I know coupons. And no, you know it's a telemetry thing. They've got d some data saying what, how often do people use their browser to shop? And okay, we know it's a big percentage, right? So, so let's again. let's make it so you're t more tied in with Bing and and our and then they properties. will stop doing it. I'm telling you, two, three years from now, yeah. they'll, be, they'll be on to the next thing. I don't remember the time frame for this, but there was a there was a Bing refresh. Yeah. 
And the big thing back then, what this could have been 10 years ago now, was, hey, you know what we discovered was people often brow- like search for celebrities. So we're going to focus on that. Oh, yeah. We're going to make our, we're gonna make our yep. celebrity search results awesome. Yeah. So you're going to have yep. like this awesome page with lots of information. If you look for photos, it's going to be a beautiful The Wonder layout. Wall. Did Remember somebody that? say <laughs> celebrity? Because uh, I just mm-hmm. heard oh. that the uh, jury has said that Amber mm-hmm. Heard did defame Johnny Depp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you go to start right now, Microsoft's feed, I'm sure there are yeah, many stories. Amongst on the this. bikini rich comment, <laughs> content, there'll be exactly now, oh, but we amazing. haven't heard on the other side about her case, and it could be they declare both victors well, and award a dollar. So, Stay so Mary Jo just said something interesting. She said, if you go to start, what, 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 <laughs> how do I go to start? What is you know, the right, start Microsoft menu, start have you heard of that? Feed. The start feed. No, you know, start the thing feed. It was like, where's, where's the... Oh, Emerson. <laughs> you probably have it shut off, I'm sure. I guess it's... Um, uh, you, yeah, I do have a shut Go to your widget. So go to your widgets, You can go to Paul. start.com. Start.com. Yeah. Do it. Or widgets. You could also go that way. Am I wrong or am I right? I don't know. They already I, got Johnny Depp and Amber in there. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The, she acted with malice. She sure uh, did. Yeah, wow. And I don't know. I don't have an opinion on this. These people are nuts. But uh, <laughs> uh, she didn't ma- mention him by name in the op-ed. So, but apparently that didn't that didn't matter. So uh, so far the well, jury who else is really. Could she have been talking about? right? Well, like, I guess. Right. Like um, one of my uh, female co-hosts on a podcast has been awfully abusive. And, uh, I'm not going to name names. Here, but. I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> what are you talking about Mesa. <laughs> hey, I want to take a little. But his break. name rhymes with Saul Surratt. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a little de- uh, depth. I mean, break and uh, and watch TV. No, and and talk about our sponsor. But when we come back, there is a really big story. Steve Gibson made it his uh, lead story yesterday in Security oh my. Now. The okay. Duck Duck Go story, yeah. which has a Microsoft angle. So, we'll get to that in a moment, but first a word from our sponsor, Melissa, the data experts. The last thing you need in business is a, uh, a customer contact list that is out of date, that has the wrong name in it, or supplier list, or any, any of your data. Poor data costs organizations, on average, $15 million every year, and of course, the longer poor data stays in your system, poor quality data, the more losses you accumulate you got to ensure your business has the right information. That's key to success. Melissa does it for you. Uh, Melissa is a leading provider of global data quality and address management solutions. Uh, there's another side to accurate uh, customer data. That's customer service. You know, if somebody's calling you and they're upset and they... And you give, and you call them by the wrong name, or you say you live in Florida, right? And you say, "No, I'm in Missoula, Montana." What are you talking about? That's just going to take things from bad to worse. You need Melissa's identity solutions. Melissa's real-time identity verification service includes identity, ID, and document verification, age authentication, uh, even global watch list screening. This is really important for anti-money laundering uh, and KYC compliance. Um, you can tailor this service to your specific sign-up process and risk management requirements to ensure fast onboarding, or if you're doing e-commerce, to make sure uh, that your organization is protected against fraud. With Melissa, you reduce risk, you ensure compliance, you keep customers happy. 2.1 billion clean, validated records with Melissa in over 240 countries and territories. So they've got the data. You can ensure compliance in anti-money laundering, politically exposed persons, Bank Secrecy Act. You could score and target customers with detailed demographic and firmographic data appends. You can complete customer records, add missing names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, correct, you know, one digit off phone numbers, email addresses that are missing apart. Now, I got to tell you, Melissa is absolutely careful with your data. They understand that's the crown jewels. So they undergo com- ind- regular independent security audits to make sure they're doing the right thing. They're SOC 2 compliant, HIPAA compliant, GDPR compliant. Duplicate information, just as bad, right? You may send two catalogs, three, four, five to the same address. Waste of money, waste of time. Uh, so you want to get rid of the duplicates too? Melissa can do that with their data matching. So you can do batch address cleaning. You upload to an FTP server, download it. 
You can do identity verification, which reduces risk, ensures compliance, keeps customers happy. You can uh, do geocoding enrichments, convert addresses into latitude and longitude coordinates. Email verification, remove up to 95% of bad email addresses from your database. They even have an app. If you want to try it in iOS or Android, it's the Lookups app that lets you search addresses, names, and more at your fingertips. Flexible deployment options mean you can do it any way you want. On-prem, uh, SaaS, there's a fantastic API. In fact, why don't you try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal? It's easy to log on, sign up, start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned for free. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date at melissa.com slash twit. Melissa dot com slash twit we thank them so much for their support of windows weekly you support us too when you use that address so make sure you use it melissa.com slash twit uh i'm still watching the results come in it's a long uh mm -hmm. long <laughs> Uh, verdict, but it sounds like a complete sure. and utter Most victory. Most importantly, you got to get this one right. <laughs> for Johnny Depp. Yeah, I don't want to get it wrong. Sure. In fact, I think they're awarding him $5 million in damages. So uh, yeah. I'm still watching. They're still reading the verdict. Uh, but it's so one sixth of a pirate movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like, um, yeah. But uh, and again, I don't. you don't listen to this show for the latest on the. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard trial. Well, not yes, so you far do. you haven't, but <laughs> some of you do. Yeah. So I just, some I didn't want you to, you I didn't want you to, you know, get off this podcast and go, what happened? What happened? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, back we go. Let's, uh, we're going to get to that uh, duck, duck, go story because that's, uh, that's great mm -hmm. stuff. But there's <laughs> other stuff in the Microsoft 365 world. Mary Jo, you want to you want to take this? I do. Um, I thought this was a story you were saying Steve Gibson was excited about. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, actually, that, that would make some sense. Yeah. It would. Okay. So, yeah. you know, Microsoft's been rebranding everything lately with very short one-word names. Like we've got Defender referring to a whole suite of security stuff. Priva, privacy management stuff. Purview, compliance and governance. Well, now there's another one. Entra, E-N-T-R-A. Microsoft Entra. And what this is, is a family of security and identity access products from Microsoft. That's why I thought maybe Steve cared about this. So in this family, you've got Azure Active Directory, you've got permissions management technology from their Cloud Knox acquisition from last year, and verified ID technology that they're working on now and is in public preview. The, the Microsoft thinking here is bundle all this up into a suite, works for them because then customers tend to buy all the products bundled and they sell all three together. Um, from a customer standpoint, their claim is it's simpler, it's we do all the integration, it works across all the clouds, and it works across all devices, so that you can be sure in our ever-expanding security defense perimeter world that you will be protecting everything, even when you have suppliers coming in and out of your domain, you'll be able to use the secure sign-in and the digital identity verification to make sure you know who you're dealing with and thus reduce security issues. So I'm more intrigued by the name than I am with all the stuff in this thing because I think it's super interesting since Charlie Bell came over to Microsoft from AWS. He was a big wig over there at AWS. Now he runs like the unified security compliance identity teams all up that they've been doing all this rebranding, repackaging. Um, there've been a lot of shakeups internally um, in terms of reorgs. So he's, you know, like he's a very low profile guy publicly. He's only given a couple interviews, but he's doing a lot of things under the covers to try to bring some unity to the various things that Microsoft has going on and security identity compliance. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people hate these rebrands because they, you know, especially if you're a partner or a customer, you have to remember all these new names like Priva, Purview, now you've got Entra. Um, but that's where we're going. And I, I guessing we're going to see even more of these bundles going forward. They don't seem to have a problem bundling stuff. Like Paul said earlier in the podcast, um, Microsoft had some problems about bundling 
Internet Explorer and Windows in the past. But ever since that was over, they've gotten bolder and bolder about bundling things together. And they seem to just be going full steam ahead with that. So, yeah, there you go. Entra. When you hear Entra, think digital identity and security. Yeah, actually, I could have seen Steve oh. talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And Microsoft's famous. I don't like the new, I don't like this name though. Entra, yeah, because you just Entra, Exeta, like Viva yeah, so, Entra. Yeah. You know, I I had an interview with Alex. I think his last name is Simmons or Simons at Microsoft, who is a VP in this space. And I said, I asked him about the name, mm -hmm. and he said, Well, as you know, when we name things, we we look at many names. I mean, they spend millions of dollars when they name something. Oh God, right? you always like sure they, they use that <laughs> outside. Firms. Yeah, they hire. Yeah, outside yeah, firms yeah. and do all kinds of research. Yeah. And he said the reason they picked Enter was because they wanted it to imply it's an entrance into a secure world. And they didn't want a gate type name because that would imply you weren't getting access to the secure perimeter. They think these things through, you guys, like a lot. <laughs> like they think a lot about the names of this stuff. <laughs> they should have so, just yeah, called it Nova. Nova. You know? Hey, you know Microsoft what? That might be Nova. a future name. Might be a future name for something. <laughs> Doesn't go, right? <laughs> <laughs> no va. No va. Uh -huh. I, I have to correct myself. Yeah. I guess there is a little money going to Amber Heard, a lot more money going to Johnny Depp. So uh, it's a, basically a victory for Johnny Depp, although they did find Amber Heard guilty of uh, some uh, defamation and I think $2 million <laughs> for her, $15 million for, uh, for Johnny. So I don't know. It's not, Hey, I'd it's report, a mixed bag. I'd report the scores of the World Cup too. It's just you know, it's all it's all in there. I just don't want you <laughs> to. It's feel all like, part of the show. It's all part of, it's all part of the show. <laughs> Eurovision. <laughs> Ukraine won yeah. and donated. Uh, the yeah. uh, they sold their uh, trophy and donated the. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that was cool. Proceeds to yep. the Ukraine uh, war effort. So yeah, yep. that was very right. cool. Uh, three, not one, not two, but three exclusive. Excel mm -hmm. features. Are you excited? Oh, well, they're one going of these away, I'm surprised Leo. about. <laughs> oh, they're, they're they're oh they're not adding them. They're subtracting them. Right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. So the the first one they're subtracting is money in Excel, and I am kind of surprised about this one because they made a pretty big deal out of this when they launched this two yep. years ago. It was a personal finance management service that they were going to add to your Office 365 consumer plans um, as a benefit. So it was meant to be like a carrot to get you help get you to subscribe. It was just a template in Excel for you to like maintain, look at look at your finances and budget and do all that through using Plaid as the inter interim service connecting you right. up with the banks. Um, and the, the reason they're discontinuing this, they... I mean, they don't come right out and say it, but what they say is basically no one was using it. That's kind of the, the gist, right? <laughs> and um, yeah. they're advising people to go to a service that's very similar called Tiller, which I had never heard of, but yeah, it does something very similar. Right. Um, they're giving you a two-month free trial. What's interesting about that? Yeah. Tiller is an, a solution like Money in Excel. It's Excel-based. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a... You know, it is a third-party money management solution, but it literally right. works in Excel. Yeah. So they, I guess, if you prefer to money, you manage your money in a spreadsheet for some yeah. reason. Um, it will be at least familiar. But this, um, this was kind of a rapid turnaround. I mean, are we going to be this aggressive about getting rid of features that nobody uses? It seems kind of surprising. What? So what? So. Yeah. Do, do what you, is it? What do you do oh, with these? Yeah, so, right. So, in other words, like, well, so the first thing to understand is that with any Office product, there's, and just talking about Excel in this case, there's a standalone version of Excel that's sold in perpetual versions of Office that does not get this feature, right? This was just for Microsoft 365 subscribers. So, one of the selling points of Microsoft 365 is that you keep getting new features. And by the way, if you pay attention to this, they just released a, yet another monthly blog post every month. Dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of features mm -hmm. are added to Microsoft 365. So this is one of them a while back. And um, I do remember thinking at the time, I don't know that managing money in a spreadsheet is necessarily the best way to do that. But obviously, some people think that way. And, and, and it's, mm. you know, it's a spreadsheet. It's money, you know, numbers, whatever. But um, 
anyway, I so it was one of probably 52 features they released in May 2021 or whatever it was. Um, okay. okay. But yeah, you don't hear a lot about them taking features away. Like I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I can't remember them ever doing this, to be honest. So it, it only applies to Microsoft 365 subscribers. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lose anything. I mean, the, the, the data connect's going to go away, but your spreadsheet will remain on your computer or in OneDrive, whatever, and uh, we'll have your data in it. You can move to Tiller, like Mary Jo said. Um, I don't <laughs> I don't know. This caused me to go look at these features because one of the other ones was yeah. like Wolfram yeah. Data Types, which is kind of curious. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, I distinctly remember them promoting this notion that Excel me too. was sort of like SQL Server. It could work with almost any data mm -hmm. type. And, you know, this was yep. proof of that. And then the other one was like these partner offers. Did you look at the partner yeah. offers? Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. like a... You know the the start a subscription to a meal de meal delivery service like it's like this yeah. weird collection of four or five little yeah. freebies. I don't, so yeah. that's okay. I, yeah, I don't. I feel yeah. like they're trying to clean. I feel like they're trying to clean, clean up, up these subscriptions yeah. and yeah. make room for other things that they're going to add in. That's my guess. What's going on here? Okay. Right? They're like, okay, who's using this? Okay, not enough people. Let's get rid of that and let's make room for some other features we're going to try adding in. Okay. Maybe. I mean, all right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. It just was surprising. Yeah, I agree with you. It was surprising. <laughs> it's weird. But, you know, maybe it's, yeah. there is some support cost to it. And yeah, uh, maybe, true. maybe they're, they're, some of these things are changing and they didn't want to spend the money to make it work yeah. or something right. like that. I don't know. We don't maybe know. Plaid was holding them up. Plaid was like, let's increase it our could, cost. You know what? That could really be. It could be. It could. Yeah, you don't know. Plaid, maybe Plaid moved to AWS and they were like, screw those guys. I guarantee you, I'm going to hear from somebody, though, on the radio show who uses this. Yeah, you know, of are. course. My whole financial life is in Excel and I'm... No, in. we've got we've got somebody in Discord who uses it here. Yeah. Um, who is he our user, 70715. Yeah. <laughs> that he, guy. He, he lives in Mexico and he uses the features yeah. uh, to convert from pesos to U.S. dollars. So <laughs> it, he's basically looking up the exchange rate. Through the, yeah, okay. and the track his grocery purchases, right? There like, probably so are other it. ways you could do that. I'm almost certain there are other ways you could do that. I literally tried yeah. to write an app to do this, but yes, I would think yeah. there are ways to yeah. do this. I mean, there's got to be some data connector that can get For you sure. to that information, yeah. I would think. Maybe not. I, I researched that, and it's very hard to find without paying for it. Really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yep. What so, I wanted was an alert. If the uh, peso to dollar exchange rate changed to a certain amount, plus or minus 20, and mm -hmm. like that kind of live data thing, very hard. If you just want like, here was the average from today, that's not so hard. But mm -hmm. if you actually want like a, you know, live data, it's expensive. Forget about mm -hmm. Amber uh, and Johnny. Here's oh, a big yeah. story just came across the wire. According to okay. CNBC, Facebook's COO, Sheryl Sandberg, is stepping down. It's time, right? <laughs> she was one of now th uh, the kind of triumvirate. Mark uh, handled, you know, the the she handled the business. Mark Zuckerberg handled the so you know, the engineering, and then of course they and brought. She in handled going after Toto on her broom. <laughs> they brought in. They brought in Nick Clegg to kind of handle yeah. global relations, yeah. and that was a you know a, a triumvirate that was running Facebook, sure. yep. and, and has been for uh, well Cheryl and Mark for some time. So. Cheryl Sandberg stepping down is a is a big. She's going to end up in a business with Mark Penn or something. You know? Well, I think she saw <laughs> she saw how much money Johnny Depp got, and now she's going to. Right. I don't know. Now, wasn't she in trouble for dating the head of Activision? Is that she the was. She I'm she uh, right. she and Bobby Kotick uh, were an item. Yeah. And, uh, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, we can turn everything yeah. into gossip, my friend. We can. Just we can start our own Microsoft Start service, but a better one with it, no bikini pictures and only gossip. Here's her. <laughs> uh, here's her statement from Facebook. Today, I'm sharing the news that after 14 years, I will be leaving Meta. Uh, oh, she talks God. a lot about how hard she worked. Blah blah blah. Sitting by Mark's side for these 14 years has been the honor and privilege of a lifetime. Blah blah blah. Uh, when I when I joined <laughs> Facebook, I had a two year old and a six month old. I didn't know if this was the right time for a new and demanding job. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out why she's leaving. Right. That's why I, I leaned in. Then I leaned, I leaned out. Leaned in. I wrote a book. And I killed my husband. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, thanks yeah. to Mark for giving me. Yeah, the what's she doing now? Where's she going? Well, that's what I. 
when I took this job in 2008, I hoped this would be in this role for five years. 14 years later, it's time for me to write the next chapter of my life. I'm not entirely sure what the future sure. will bring. I've learned no one ever is, but I know it will include... Oh, she's going to spend more time with her money. Focusing more on my foundation <laughs> and philanthropic work, which is more important to me than ever, given how critical Did this the, moment the, is for the women. Star Wars movies need a new villain or something? What's going oh, on? She's, get, she's marrying Tom this summer. Uh... We don't know who Tom, I don't know who Tom what is. Tom, Tom is Tom. Like the guy that the guy that married uh, Oprah. Some guy named Tom. <laughs> uh, no, I think he's the guy who started MySpace. I think. Away. Anyway, parenting our expanded family of five children over the next few months. Mark and I will transition my direct reports, and I will leave the company this fall. Uh, she will continue I... to serve on the board of directors. So that's uh, that's a big story. I don't know. Uh, what it means, she's going to... You know, I took this company from a friendly family sharing site <laughs> to a data gathering nightmare. Yeah. Couldn't be prouder. Yeah. Um, Couldn't be prouder. You think it's... it's? I, I actually take it at face value because, yeah, she's been in the hot seat, but she's been in the hot yeah. seat for a while. I don't think that's new. For sure. Mm. Uh, and she's weathered it pretty well, including the Francis Haugen uh, whistleblower you know, uh, complaints. We just talked about there these people that work on the was it edge experiences team or web experiences team, <laughs> and uh, you know how do they face their life every day? I mean, I I think working at Meta is that ex exponentially worse. Can you imagine? You know? Can you imagine? It's a lot of stress. No, a lot, yeah. a lot of stress. Well, so. I assume you get paid really well, and that's how you kind of cope with it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't and know I think she's she's always been somewhat politically active, especially for women's causes, and I think. That yeah. she may yep. be anticipating uh, the fight over Roe v. Wade uh, coming up in the next yeah. couple of weeks. And yeah, I think maybe she, uh, I think uh, I'm going to take it at face value. Plus, she's got a new family. She's getting married to Tom, right. MySpace Tom. Tom. So that's exciting. <laughs> Is it really him? No, it's that guy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Almost certain. Well, that would be hilarious, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let me list the things I care about less than Tom. I'm done. Uh, Tom, her his name is uh, Tom <laughs> Bernthal. And uh, they uh. got engaged in February 2020. Mm -hmm. He's the founder and CEO of a strategic consulting agency called Kelton Global. Kelton okay. Global. So money, money guy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, money guy. Money yeah. guy, yeah. Web3, oh, NFT, blah, blah, blah. No, blah. really? No, I'm making I it hope up, not. But it could be. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Um, Guys... Yes. DuckDuckGo has a Microsoft problem. Can we, Can we talk about that? Because I do. Oh, yeah. this was I want to hear this story. This was I Steve this Gibson's story, story of the, of the yeah. week. Yesterday. Yeah, so don't tell me what he said because it's going to be a lot smarter than what I have to say about it. Um, yeah, I, I actually watched this unfold on Twitter. And uh, basically, there's a guy. Yeah. yeah, it is how it happened, right? So there's a guy who describes himself as a privacy and data supply chain researcher who had done some uh, audits and got some results he didn't expect. And he checked them twice like Santa Claus and came back and said, yeah, the DuckDuckGo version, the browsers on iOS and Android are not blocking what he called Microsoft data flows for services like LinkedIn or Bing. In other words, it was allowing uh, the br or it was allowing those services to track users, which is something DuckDuckGo, of course, they make the privacy browser, says that it blocks, right? Automatically blocks hidden third-party trackers. So he mentioned this publicly on Twitter. So this guy from DuckDuckGo, who is, was he the, I'm trying to find out who he is. Uh, He's the CEO, founder and CEO. Really, he posted on Twitter. CEO, okay. CEO, yeah. uh, he responded on Twitter. He explained the situation. And Reddit. He, said, yeah, he had a long just, well, post on Reddit as get, well, yeah. Okay, interesting. So multi, it was kind of a multi-post, uh, multi-tweet thing on Twitter. And basically what he was saying, and I guess we should just step for back, back for a second and remember what it is that this browser is, right? So DuckDuckGo is a, is a third, small third-party company. They create extensions for mainstream browsers like Chrome and Edge and so forth that will help block tracking. And they have their own browser, and they've been expanding that product, so now they have versions on mobile as well. That product doesn't support extensions yet, interestingly, although it will eventually, and you know, you'd be able to add to the functionality. But they also have their own search service, right? And so, they, you don't just start a search service from scratch. You gather data, you partner with other companies, and one of the big partners in this space is Microsoft, right? There's really uh, only two. Uh, in fact, yeah, that's what Gabriel said. Is you know, we could have gone yeah. to Google or we could have gone to Microsoft. Yep, 
So they went and, to Microsoft. And he said right? the and reason is only two is they each spend more than a billion a year to maintain the search index. It's not yeah, this something is not, you can just do yourself. College interns aren't going to come up with one of no. these things this summer. This is not, you know, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but what he basically said was because of its agreement with Microsoft, uh, it does a lot. It does pass through trackers. By the way, this has been on DuckDuckGo's website forever. This is not. He didn't discover something we didn't know about. They this is this is on their website. You can go see it for yourself. It's been there forever. Well, it's been there for as long as they've had the service. And uh, ad clicks are managed by Microsoft's ad network. Is one of the little quotes in there. So basically, what he's saying is that yes, we we allow the tracking to go through. However, we do anonymize everything, right? So. I think we all understand that this stuff is sophisticated enough that Microsoft probably has enough, you know, data tendrils they could sort of figure out who you are exactly. But it's, but they actually do anonymize the data. Um, so th the way they describe it is we work with Microsoft to make ad clicks protected, meaning they're completely anonymous. For non-search tracker blocking in our browser, we block most third-party trackers. Unfortunately, our search syndication agreement with Microsoft prevents us from doing more to Microsoft-owned properties. And then we've been continually pushing and expect to be doing more soon. Okay. So I guess my stance on this is like, it comes down to, to have the service, they have to partner with somebody. Is it better with air quotes to be tracked by Microsoft than Google? Objectively, probably, right? I mean, just because Microsoft doesn't have the market power that Google does in this case, um, but it's not going to be tracked in either way for sure. Um, and I also, what this reminded me, and it, this made me go back and look something up. When, when the Chromium-based version of Edge first came out, which might be as long as three years ago now, I don't remember, two or three years ago, I, of course, went all in with this thing. And it, remember one of the innovations in Microsoft's browser was they had this really simple anti-tracking interface. You could have, the, like, you know, it's like low, medium, high. And high tracking, they said, or high tracker blocking could conceivably cause problems on the web, right? And so I turned it on. And then I noticed <laughs> the you know, things everyone notices when they're browsing. I searched for a particular kind of sneaker and I started getting ads for this sneaker. Uh, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? And as it turns out, even with a browser like Edge where they marketed it for its anti-tracking capabilities, you actually have to use really strong uh, anti-tracker extensions to not be tracked. And so the problem with like a DuckDuckGo browser is those extensions can't exist. Of course, DuckDuckGo would build that in themselves if they could, which they can't for Microsoft. So it's kind of in a nebulous area. Like it, by default, the DuckDuckGo browser is probably more pri or is absolutely more private than Chrome or Edge or I don't know about Safari or Firefox, honestly, but definitely than the big browsers, most of the big browsers. But it's not like it's not 100 percent just like. The anti-tracking solution in Edge is not 100%, you know, and so you kind of have to just understand where that's at. So what did Steve say? I bet Steve was a little more critical of that. Uh, no, actually, I think he kind of pretty much uh, echoed what you were saying. He rewrote Gabriel's statement because he said it's not, it's not at all clear, and what he should have said was this. Um, yeah. First of all, I don't know if it's anonymized. Basically, they allow Microsoft's trackers, in this case it was LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, full access so whatever they would get any other time they get. It's not like DuckDuck is in between you and LinkedIn. They just, there's a LinkedIn they tracker. They pass it through. Oh, they, interesting. Yeah, it's okay. passed right in. Um, but their point was, and actually this is the thing to me that's most interesting. Microsoft, in order to use Bing, we had to do this, even though this isn't part of search, this is part of a browser. We had to do it, according to Microsoft. Furthermore, right. Microsoft enjoined them from telling anybody they were doing it. Oh, oh. Well, then, that's hmm. that's why they did not announce this ahead of time. In fact, they can only respond once it had been discovered. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he said. And then, so to me, what that raises is a couple of very interesting questions. Presumably, Google must do the same thing. Uh, I would guess. So, I mean, there's been a thing on their website for over two years that explains. Well, the browsers are new, so. This is different well, yeah, from this what is, was this going is on their, in search. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is <clears throat> these are brand new. Yeah. Um, what Mobile, they say yeah, right. in their, and they are changing this. This is from their description of the app and escape website tracking. Tracker radar automatically blocks hidden third-party trackers we can find lurking on websites you visit in DuckDuckGo, which stops the companies behind those trackers from collecting and selling your data. 
except right. and it should say except Asterisk, my except my Microsoft. Microsoft's right. trackers. And so um, uh, the security <laughs> yeah. researcher uh, went to Meta's workplace and 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 here you know DuckDuckGo said, "Oh, I blocked Google and Facebook. They were trying to track you. I blocked them. Hey, I blocked them." But what they didn't say is, <laughs> but LinkedIn went right through. So right. you know, right. yeah. Um, Interesting. But I, I have the larger question. I mean, you might say, well, uh, okay. You, I mean, I agree. You, you can't create your own search engine because it's just too expensive, too hard, mm. and there's been too much time under water under the bridge. Nevertheless, there are companies yeah. like Brave that claim they're doing that. And there are a lot of other sites that well, claim they... Uh, Brave you know, had... I think Brave might have bought a company as well. But, but yeah, it, it's... But how good is that? Then? How good I is mean, it? How, and good is Brave search a now? lot of them aggregate Google mm -hmm. or Bing or both uh, search yep. results like start pages. They say anonymize Google results. What we don't know is does why I if Microsoft does this, I'm going to presume Google does as well. So can you truly I mean, what are the agreements right. these companies have and can yep. you truly anonymize it? Mm -hmm. And you're right. It's kind of it's better than nothing. So but it's but it's but this gets into it. Yeah, but this gets into a problem because you could say, well, I'll use Brave. And I know that's not tracking me, you know. I mean, or you could say, "Well, I'll use Firefox or I'll use Edge or I feel like even Firefox Google is blocking Chrome." All of this stuff. <laughs> okay, but but they you, are using Google Search. Yeah. You can you can. Uh, I have you can block can install in sex that's right. Yep, yep, yep. You can get privacy badge or whatever you want. Mm. And I guess it's a weird situation because you want to kind of like and trust DuckDuckGo. I like what they're doing. I like the whole stance of the company, but. They have a web browser that doesn't support extensions, and they're not blocking one of the biggest tech companies on earth. Um, so, yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a problem. Steve says, "I think so, their heart's in the right place. They would not be making an exception to allow Microsoft's domain to run third-party right. scripts if their search index syndication contract did not require it. They're not happy about it either, and it's yep. the price they pay for being able to offer DuckDuckGo's tracking-free search service." Uh, and I really yeah. would love to know what Google asks, because I can't imagine Microsoft asks for yeah. this and Google doesn't, right? Right. Yeah, but you, but G Google is so much more rapacious in this space, right. aren't they? I mean, like, right. So they must be even worse. This <laughs> much much worse. But this is like a lesser of two evil thing. Not Microsoft is awesome. Yeah. Like Microsoft would love to be as evil as Google and do you know, <laughs> and have the results well, that Google I has. I think Microsoft um, needs to lift the restriction about not telling anybody yeah. what's going on yeah. because we need right. to know what, uh, in order to make that decision. That's a reasonable thing. Yeah, yeah, and then we get it. But you know, what's the point of a DuckDuckGo browser that? Well, it blocks ninety percent. Blocks. I know, but, <laughs> but it's not perfect. I mean, it's not <laughs> nothing's perfect. But I, but I, I guess the problem, like I said, I feel like almost any mainstream browser with one extension is probably more private than DuckDuckGo's thing, and that's that's the problem. Because you thought you were doing the right thing by installing this thing, mm. right? I, that's the that's that's the unfortunate yeah. reality here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I think the message that uh, we ought to give our listeners, uh, mm -hmm. certainly the message I give my listener, um, if you're on the internet, you're in a public place, you're probably being yeah. tracked in a variety yeah. of ways. Anything right. you post on the internet eventually will be public. Mm -hmm. You cannot assume that anything you post will always be private. And you should never, <laughs> so, right? In this yep. bra in this conversation alone, I have made commentary about the Queen, Amber Heard, <laughs> Charles Sandberg, <laughs> and everybody knows. So it's all out there. It's imp I think it, it's a fool's paradise to say, "Oh no, I am uh, using yeah. the internet, and no one knows what I'm doing." Right. If you really right. want to be private, you need to move to a log cabin in the woods. And oh, by the way, <laughs> no electricity. Uh, yeah. No utilities at all. Scott McNeely was right. And you better have a, a camouflage net above your head because there's helicopters and drones. I mean, it's very... Yes, Scott McNeely was right. Privacy is... <laughs> he said, privacy is over. Get over it. He said, get yep. over it. Yep. Get He's over it. He's right. I mean, this I don't... like 1998-ish. Yeah, a long, a long time, time ago. Yeah. I don't know if I, I... I think we should get over it. 
But you know, we should. Well, we, we should, sh- but we should. I mean, but let's not be foolish either. We know. Right. Let's not. Yes. Right. Let's not be naive. It's, let's not uh, be naive. There's a better right. word than foolish. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's not be naive about it. Yeah. And 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 as you know, you probably should act accordingly. I feel bad about this. I've, I I like DuckDuckGo, and I like what they're trying to do. I've recommended their products. Um, this is going to hurt them, I think. Don't yeah, I do think? too. And I, I I feel bad about that because they're like Steve said, their heart is in the right place, yeah. and I they're trying mm-hmm. to do the right thing, and I think we should support that. But in the short term, you need to do what's right for you as an individual. And I feel very strongly, regardless how, of what web browser you're using, you got to use something like how you culpable block origin, is, like you said. is Microsoft in this? Is there any blame? One hundred percent. Yeah, it's all. It's all the. I mean, it's almost all their blame. Yeah. Or the blame is. Them. I don't know how to speak, but it's. Uh, it's almost one hundred percent them, right? It's the, their requirements is the reason DuckDuckGo couldn't communicate this. Yeah. yeah. That's. I think that's something Microsoft should rethink. Because that. Impl- that's like that's. Uh, if you say that, that means you're guilty. Like you feel guilty, mm-hmm. like oh, and don't tell anybody. Exactly, don't tell anyone <laughs> this is our agreement. That, I mean, if you're gonna track, yeah, yeah. that's not how. That's Say not we're how tracking. Good people talk. We're yeah, tracking. Exactly. Admit yep. it. Yep. Tell people we're tracking, and the more right. people know that, the more they maybe will calm down. Maybe because they know they're being. I don't know. I just why don't lie about it. Don't right. and don't force yeah. others. People to are going to find it. out. People are going to find. And then out. it's really and then embarrassing. You look worse. Yes. Right. You look way worse. Yes. In the end. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Hey. Uh, should I buy a new uh, Surface Laptop Go? <laughs> no. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> it's so, a little better, right? I think I think it's a lot better. This is a cool little computer. My my issue with it is that it does not have keyboard backlighting, from what I can tell. This, in the sense that it's never come up, so I'm assuming it's just not there. Um, I don't understand not offering it. I don't understand not offering it for like nineteen dollars or something like you know charge extra for it. <laughs> But 12.4 inch three by two display, it's all plastic, you know, it's cheap. Uh, But, you know, 11th gen, not 12th gen, but again, it's the low end thing. Uh, Core i5, you can get eight, 16 uh, gigs of RAM. You can get 128, 256, I think even more uh, on the storage. I I think this, the other thing, and maybe Mary Jo remembers this. I feel like the first version of this, I could be completely wrong. I thought it was education only. Is that not right? Hmm. I don't remember, but I always get confused with Surface Go and Laptop Go. Um, yeah, well, Surface like what? Who's for what? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I thought I thought the original Surface Laptop Go was an education only device. Like that was how you had to get it, and it looks to me like they're just selling this thing off their website now. And yeah. honestly, and the prices business. they're charging. Oh, so I share your confusion, Mary Jo, because I was thinking this is a Surface. Yeah, Go. this is the Surface yeah. Laptop Go. Right, right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Right. This yeah. to me looks like a nice little laptop. That's and it's not know, for again, it's not I, cheap. It's not a cheesy, cl- uh, well, Chromebook clone anymore. It's better. Right, right. They have normal core pro, you know, processors. Um, you know, kind of a minimum. It's eleventh gen, uh, but it's still it's you know that's fine. Right? That's fine yeah. for a low end product mm-hmm. like a, this. I don't know. This looks good to me. Okay. It's fun and colors. Is a sage color this year? What's the price? Do we know? I think it starts at I want to say five nine nine, and then uh, yeah. it goes up. No keyboard. I think th- no, that does have the keyboard. <laughs> oh no, this is the keyboard. So I think you could yeah. configure it pretty well. Like it would be seven ninety nine, maybe eight ninety nine. Yeah. If a, a really high end version. Um, and that's yeah. great. It's I mean, an i five, a real core i five. Yep. Mm-hmm. Eight gigs of RAM. It's a little light. That's yeah, you know, but you can get sixteen. You oh, you can. 16. Oh, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah. It's you a can computer. configure it's these not. pretty high up, and like, there's business versions and there's consumer versions. Mm-hmm. Some have fingerprint readers, some don't. Like, there's a whole oh, okay. lot of skews of this thing. <laughs> I could have sworn this was education only, and and if I'm wrong, I'm yeah. whatever. I don't remember, but I can't remember. But I, I like that it's out in the world. I think this is nice. I I felt like the first version of this might have harmed the brand a little bit because, I, I, and that was the other thing, right? Wasn't it? It was sixteen by nine. It, wasn't this this product? Am I missing something? Can't I remember. thought it was this product. I really You're just cannot too. keep. <laughs> I cannot keep the go and the laptop go straight. I cannot. Yeah. Right. Well, the, um, I mean, the all go I know had its is own problems in the beginning. Of course, the go is really tiny, like like smushed right. keyboard, like hard to type on. Yep. And I thought the laptop go was the same, but I might be no, wrong. No, I about don't that. think so. I mean, it's small. No, yeah. I think it's a little bigger. It's still small, it? but it's. Okay. I think when you when you have a three by two display. 
It's yeah. still 12. 3.4 inches, which is small. Yeah, 3.2. But mm-hmm. we remember, Surface Pro has been 12 point something inches forever. Yeah, And True. 3 by 2 gives it's you, fine. It, you know, yeah, it almost yeah. gets into a 13 inch uh, category. Yeah. I don't know. I, it looks good to me on paper. I don't have one. I, I But it... And maybe I'm mixing something. Maybe is there some, is there some education product I've completely zoned on that I'm confusing this with? Because I could have sworn the first Surface, version of this was a Chromebook the first, education. No, you know what? The first Surface laptop was education, right? That was the target. No, audience. no, I know that, but that was that was always yeah. a full. That was always a full. But the Go was like was. a Chromebook like, competitor. Was yeah. original. <clears throat> so. By the way, this is a leak. This is not yeah. official. So. Oh no! It came out today. The official. Oh no! Now oh, it is it official. So it, it's leaked, oh, okay. and now it's it's yeah. Oh good. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, it's um pre pre orders today goes on sale starting next week. Well, let me go to surface dot com. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I had no yeah. idea. I like the new. I like the color. I. Yeah, the green. The green is nice. nice. Yeah. So surface yeah. go. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, it is. surface go to me was always too small. This, but this is yeah. like okay. No, don't sign me up. <laughs> um, oh my how important is backlighting, Paul? You, you and The Verge both say, "Oh, no backlight." For the Huge. keyboard, Huge. I, I, I don't, I don't I would, like keyboards with no backlight. Because yeah. you use them in the dark. Yep, could yeah. not use it. Okay, so starts yeah. at six hundred. Release date June sixth, Monday. Oh, you still have to check. Oh no, that's for special pricing. Okay, so there still is eligible students, students, teachers, parents, yeah. military. Special I could have sworn. I gotta. I'll look. I, I should look this up. I don't know. Service. Yeah, look it up. It's gonna bug Laptop you. You have go. to look. <laughs> it's really bugging me. I could have sworn this was education only. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, Paul. October 2020. That's my memory. <clears throat> I think so. It has a touch screen. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, turn up the screen, right? Well, and then it I was, can see. Actually, it, it, Look, was three by, it was three by two. Hmm. Yeah, it still is. Mm-hmm. There's people holding it up uh, in the window so they can read the keys. So see, there's, <laughs> there's one solution to the backlight. <laughs> there's also no pictures of anyone using it on their lap. Uh-oh. And you know why. You know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, this should be, oh, this man. should, it's a laptop. It should oh, be oh, laptop. Oh, oh, Okay, here, here we go, guys. This is what I'm, con- yeah. I'm confusing things. I, I knew something was off. There's something called Surface Laptop SE. Oh, that's right. That's right. The that's right. For that is. That's degree. only for that's education. That's the one that has a 16 yeah. by 9 display. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. I, I'm so sorry. I completely. So this no, is right. this has right. just always been their kind of lowest. Is this their lowest end surface? Would you say? Well, except for that SE thing I was just talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, for I, normal people. I guess people. technically speaking, <clears throat> well, you could get a Surface Go, which is the tablet for less if you didn't get the keyboard, I assume. No? Yeah. It's kind of heavy. It's two and a half pounds. Does that seem heavy to you? That's like a full size laptop yeah, weight. That's yeah, that's lap, yeah. laptop weight. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. All right. Well, it is a laptop, right? It yeah, is. Right. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah. Sixteen gigs RAM, two fifty six gig I mean, storage, i five ten ninety nine. Yep. Yeesh. Ten ninety nine. It's not cheap. <laughs> not cheap. Yeesh. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. So, well, it's it is a premium PC line, except for that SE thing I was confusing, but. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. All right. Uh, studio, Surface yeah. Laptop Studio. <sighs> yeah, so this is the uh, the kind of folding laptopy thing that replaces Surface Book. Um, yeah. And it was announced, what, last September, October? So this is a brand new product. I believe at that time they said that it would support a dynamic refresh rate. And now, via the May 2022 um, firmware updates, that feature is available. So mm-hmm. I guess it's been in the Insider program or something, but... This is another Surface I do not have, but um, I wish I did. This is a nice one. So it can go up to 120. So, you know, obviously variable or uh, dynamic refresh rate <coughs> will, you know, dynamically change the refresh rate for you, which saves battery life if it's... So it doesn't have to always be on a high refresh rate if it's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. So, no big deal. It's just something quick. But you know what's not going to be quick? Yep. A lot of Xbox stuff. I know. <laughs> Mary Jo, what, what, but luckily, you're feeling threatened. Uh, just, what's what's uh, Mary Jo has twice? something. She's got <coughs> what, what is, is that? Sriracha soft snack, so I can 
take up my Don't time that, feeding Mary him. Jo, that's no, not I will that not. Bad. I will not. I, although it is that bad, but I'm going to share <laughs> it with Sarachi while you guys hey, wow. are Xbox. <laughs> Actually, right. I'm going to blow through this. So Enjoy. Get, I'll turn off your right. microphone so we won't hear the, <laughs> the uh, chewing and the caterwauling. <laughs> so we've we've known for several years, uh, mostly thanks to Brad Sams, that Microsoft has been working on a dongle for Xbox Cloud Gaming, which you know has gone by different names. Um, Microsoft actually confirmed this past week that it has been working on this game streaming device, which they codenamed Keystone. And, and this is like you would expect. It's like any dongle, like a like a Roku or an Amazon a Fire TV dongle. You plug it into an HDMI port. And it has, in this case, it would have compatibility with your Xbox wireless controller. It lets you stream games to your smart TV and play them that way. But <laughs> I don't know why they announced this, but they actually came out and Microsoft said, yeah, we've been working on this thing and we've decided to pivot away from the current iteration of the device. And they used the word, the word learnings, of course. It's Microsoft. They said, we will take our learnings and refocus our efforts on a new approach that will allow us to deliver Xbox Cloud Gaming to more players around the world in the future. <clears throat> I can tell you what that new approach should be. Just put the app everywhere. It should be on Apple TV. It should be on Fire TV. It should be on Roku. It should be on newer generation Samsung, LG, whatever smart uh, displays, smart TVs. Um, I don't. There's no reason for a standalone device. I mean, the. I always use my wife as this example because she's really smart, but she's also a normal person. And one of the things she kind of can't deal with because she doesn't, her brain doesn't work this way is HDMI inputs on a TV. <laughs> like to her, it's like, no, I want one interface. I want a remote. We click around and that's how it works. And I think adding yet another device to the back of a TV is not necessarily a great approach. And even if this thing was relatively inexpensive, like that Microsoft Miracast thing, um, you know, what's the point? So hopefully what they're doing is a smart thing which is just allowing this, you know, bringing their app, their Xbox app is what it would be, uh, to every conceivable platform. That's how you get this thing out into the world. So maybe that's what they mean. Maybe they'll come out with a device. I don't know, but they confirmed they were looking, uh, working on one. So we thought and, it was going to be, a, well, I mean, the rumor was it was going to be like a stick yeah. that, that let you play, but it didn't have much, did it have processing in it or... Was it more like Chromecast? No, it was, it was basically the chipset would be, it probably was basically a Miracast thing with right. a, uh, a little chipset for the Xbox wireless control. Right. So you could directly connect to that thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think that's what the, that was. And I, I don't know. Like Miracast, honestly, is not that great. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what they were doing. But uh, like I said, I, I, I get the point of it. I don't think we need yet another device. So I think they've made the right, right. decision there. Right. All right, so as we record this, it's um, <clears throat> June 1st, which we'll always call Johnny Depp Day from here on out. Johnny Depp Day. And, uh, yeah. Or Shell <laughs> yeah. Sandberg Day, one or the other. Deptopolis. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so we have new Games with Gold to deal with in the first set of uh, Game Pass games. So Games with Gold is looking pretty good. Um, the big one this month is this classic from several years ago now, um, Super Meat Boy from Ooh. Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. Um, and then the other ones I don't actually, Pascal's uh, Project High Rise, Architect's Adventure, and Avon Colony. So those will all become available if you have an Xbox Live Gold subscription or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate um, sometime this month. And then uh, with regards to Xbox Game Pass, with their three versions, right? The version for console, the version for PC, and then Ultimate, which works across both and also gives you game streaming. Uh, the first set of titles for the first half of the month have been announced. Uh, there's only six, oddly, but there's a big one, <clears throat> which is Assassin's Creed Origins, which is the one that took place in Egypt. That's actually one of the really good ones. This might this be one. the last day. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, we, I know what you're going to say. Bioshock. Yes, the Bioshock series on free Epic. on Epic Games. Yeah. yeah, for PC, right? It, yeah. One of the, one of the yeah. greatest series That's of all time. I mean, Rue absolutely. 3, absolutely fantastic games. I meant to mention that, Leo. I'm glad you brought that up. I actually took advantage of that. Um, those games are fantastic, like all of them. All Promo ends tomorrow, excellent. June 2nd. So, okay. so waste no time. Yep. Yep. No cost. I own all three, but I, but I still, I almost like I still want to do it just because they're finished, so great. I think I've only finished two of them. But I've, yeah, I guess two of them. But um, oh, yeah, so really good. good. Really so good. good. Yep, and and the first one especially the way that begins when you dive down into the city, mm -hmm. 
I don't understand how they haven't made a movie of that yet. Um, the lore, the, too, the, so. the just yeah. the story is so great. Yep, that's excellent. And uh, and the third one, Infinite, just beautiful. So yeah, it is. I think, yep. and the gameplay is good. I think this is gonna you know one of the great games of all time. So free, yeah, I agree. get all three of them free. Yep. Um, and I think Netflix <laughs> says <clears throat> they're going to do a movie. There you go. They should. Yeah. They should. Netflix tweeted, uh, oh, no, it's Netflix geeked. Netflix bus oh, Bioshock. I mean, I'd be all inter I think, interested. you know, Halo, obviously, they haven't done a show. Um, Gears oh, this of War. this would be I so think good. It would be a great yeah. show. And, and absolutely, um, Bioshock. Yep. Uh, also, because it's June, we have a new Xbox uh, system update for this is for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. Uh, there's a couple of things. I, the big one is, uh, you know, <laughs> this is kind of goofy, but there's this notion of secret Xbox achievements. And what that means is that a game could have some set of achievements and they kind of list out what they are, but some of them are secret and you don't know what they are until you actually get them. This actually bit me really hard one year. It was the... Call of Duty game, it was called World at War. It was the, one of the World War II games, you know, when they went back. And <laughs> I read somewhere that one of the achievements, the, the, there were two hidden achievements. I had every achievement except for one. And supposedly the last achievement was the, there was uh, one multiplayer level where you could drive a tank. And they said if you drove a tank, I think it was like 20 miles or some number, uh, you'll get this achievement. So I actually spent days driving a tank around a, a, a level. <laughs> Just trying to get this achievement, and then one of my friends texted me and he said, "Hey, by the way, I found I was, <laughs> I found out that's not the secret achievement." So now with this new system update, you can unveil secret achievements. So you don't have to if you want to see what it is, you can actually see what a secret achievement is. So I wish I'd had that several years ago because that was one of the dumbest ways I've ever spent time in my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it didn't do anything. <laughs> I ran over some people. That was kind of fun, um, <clears throat> and then. The final story is not uh, really Xbox related per se, but Sony in the sense that I feel like Sony has been really closely watching Microsoft and seeing what they're doing right there. You know, they're coming out with these game streaming services that are, you know, really closely aligned with what Microsoft is doing. Uh, Microsoft announced, I'm sorry, Sony announced that its goal is to ship almost 50% of its games on PC and mobile by 2025. Wow. So today they probably ship... I don't know, 5%? <laughs> I mean, some small enough. Granted, they have a couple of big games on, on PC now, especially. But uh, this is something I've never understood about Sony or Nintendo, frankly, is them ignoring money. <laughs> because they could just port their games to other platforms. It wouldn't be that hard, so would it? so much money. Yeah. Yep. But they make and money on the PS5, too. So maybe they just want to make sure it's... No, I know, but I mean, this is a way to reach an audience that isn't going to buy one of your consoles. Right. Because, I mean, I'm an Xbox guy, but there's a handful of Sony PlayStation games that I really would like to play, The Last of Us, you know. Oh, that's um, a great game, yeah. And this is, yeah, so this is, you know, they're not going Xbox, but I mean, um, bringing these things to PC and mobile is very interesting. And I think this could be part of their all up streaming play, too. I mean, uh, you can get into an interesting area where. They port games to PCs, but you could also stream games to PCs. And if you had some kind of a Sony client, you could get that stuff going on the. Uh, well, they have something like that actually. So anyway, they they this is this makes sense to me. I'm surprised it took so long. So that's good. Yay, Mary Joe. I didn't I didn't actually look on the screen. I hope you weren't blinking for help. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you. I'm sorry. She's like over no, there. Like, no. <laughs> Mary Joe's. No, I uh, Cat Treat of the Week is coming up a little later on. It is. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Along with our apps and Enterprise Picks of the Week, the back of the book, just around the corner. Is, uh, is, does Sirachi, like, get up, eat it, and then go back to sleep, or is he's he... He's cleaning himself he right says, here. That was very satisfying. Washing his face. A heart, oh. <laughs> um, I want to take a break and talk about our sponsor, because they're so good. Hacker Rank. If you've ever uh, looked for a job in tech, if you've ever hired in tech, I'm sure you know the name Hacker Rank. I know it because I like to do their puzzles. These are puzzles really aimed at uh, developers who want to get a job in tech. And, you know, these are the kind of interview questions you might get and so forth. And it's a way to kind of polish your skills. So I, I'm, a, I'm a member. But if, if you are hiring uh, programmers, coders, engineers... I really want you to take a look at HackerRank, hackerrank.com slash W 
W, between deadlines and frustrating interview tools that aren't set up for technical interviews, especially, you know, nowadays when we're doing them over, over a, you know, a Zoom or, or WebEx or something, conducting a tech interview is kind of really quite challenging. You're ending up spending the first 10 minutes trying to set up an environment to share code. You've got a bunch of documents. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your candidate's time. And, you know, frankly, it doesn't reflect very well on you as, or the company. HackerRank has solved all this. And, I, and honestly, I, you absolutely, there's no reason not to use this. It's, called an, it's basically an IDE for the tech interview process. It's got a set of easy-to-use interview tools. You'll find the best developers for your technical projects. Uh, what do you get? Well, a pre-made question library with more than 2,500 questions. So you don't have to spend a long time kind of designing a puzzle and solving it ahead of time and all that stuff. You can find 2,500 questions, find the right questions for your coding needs. A code playback feature so you can review the candidate's coding approach, score their skill levels. You can do it in slow motion if you want. A built-in whiteboard. So you and your candidate can collaborate in real time to see how, you know, that person solves problems. This is a great way to reboot your tech interview process. Hacker Rank, click interview, done. And by the way, you could start using Hacker Rank for free right now. See how much better a technical interview can be. Two R's, H A C K E R. R-A-N-K, HackerRank.com slash WW. Time to reboot your technical interviews with HackerRank's easy-to-use tools. Pre-made question library, code playback, built-in whiteboard. You're going to be conducting better technical interviews, identifying the right talent fast, getting out of the way, getting it done. Go to if You'll just feel good. Might even hire an extra person just for fun. Go to HackerRank.com slash WW. Start a better tech interview for free today. HackerRank. HackerRank.com slash dub dub. We thank you so much for supporting Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat, it sounds like you're a long, you're uh, engaged in a very similar quest to mine. Time for your app pick of the week. Yep. I they I borrowed, I have yeah, borrowed so multiple cameras from Twit to set up a home recording mm -hmm. system. And they die. They die. They die. I don't know. Is something wrong with me? I don't know. And then I realized, Mike Asarja yeah, told me, you know, I, you can use your your iPhone, or your or your Android right. phone for a camera. It's a better camera anyway. I should have tested the Android version. So yeah, so for the past I couple have, weeks, so I've I been can, testing this you. software solution called. Okay. Oh, good. All right. So called Camo. So this is probably going to be a huge mistake, but let me. Uh, no, it's great. Oh, you're going to switch. Let's see how, if I can do this. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to I'm going to switch. Let's just see if this. Works. I love Camo. So. <clears throat> and the the Android the version is newer, so it doesn't here. work as well. Oh, look. Okay. Is this camo? So this is this is my web. No, oh no no! Web I web see the, your so, camera, uh, your phone over there. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the phone. So, um, and then I when I switch to camo, <clears throat> see if, yeah, so here you go. So you've been you using can see, like the clarity difference. The other thing, that, yeah, and the thing that's really interesting about this is, it's this is only 720p. <laughs> It through Zoom, that's as is apparently as good as Zoom does. I don't know, but we um, can we can do 1080. It can you know if you uh, okay. So you can go higher. Yeah. I mean, so in fact, John, would you check to now, see but. if we've turned on 1080 for uh, Paul? Because we're supposed to have 1080. It's a special feature. Okay. Well, but it, it's it's absolutely better. I mean, I have experimented in the past with just you can do something like you could just use your phone. I, I technically I I've not tried this with Zoom. I've done this with Teams. <coughs> there are serious issues with doing that. But even like the, the selfie camera on a phone is better than almost any webcam. But the back cameras on phones, you, this is just the main camera. You can switch to the other, you know, it wouldn't make sense to zoom or <laughs> use ultra wide, but you could. And um, I honestly, it works great. My, my only complaint is it's my phone <laughs> and I use my phone every day. So I have to mount it into this thing. I have to make sure it's at the right angle. This is not how I would want this set up normally is kind of right in front of me. I, ideally, it would be on the back of my monitor. They, they do have, um, you know, mounts that you can use for that kind of thing, of course. But <clears throat> it's just a convenience issue. So it's dramatically better quality. And I think for, uh, you know, I, I get, depending on what you're using it for, well, I don't. It, it doesn't matter what you're using for. It's, it's definitely the quality is definitely better. So, it's worked great. I've never had any glitches or problems with it. <coughs> I've only used it with iPhone. 
and only with a PC. Um, but the, I mean, the, the the amount of configuration you can do if you want to is incredible. But I ultimately, I just leave it on the defaults, and it works. It works great. So yeah, I um, you can see it for yourself. I mean, it's uh, from Reincubate, which is yeah. So that's the weird thing. You got to go to Reincubate, but. Um, yeah. It, and you also need software on your PC, I think, That's right. right? Yeah. That's right. Yep. And it's not free, but it's not expensive. I think it's 30 bucks a year, something like that. Right. And um, I've tried it on both. Uh, it works a little better on iOS. Uh, the Android version is a beta. It's fairly new, okay. but it still works. And I'm very happy with it. It's what I'm going to be using. Uh, yeah. Camo. Yeah. I uh, Yeah. I wish there was a phone I could just leave in there, <laughs> you know, and just kind of... Well, that's why I wanted the Android, because I have a couple extra Androids. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I do, too. <coughs> I think the iPhone works a little bit better. Yeah, and you can choose which lens you want. Really yeah. looks good. We the should be able to Windows do 1080. Yeah, we should be able to do 1080 with uh, okay. Zoom. Okay. So um, we'll figure out how to do that. But yeah, as you say, this looks really good. Yeah. I tried to, was it, uh, not to, yeah, so like not using, can't, like, like I said, if you, I mean, you could use your phone, of course, but then you're stuck with the mobile app version of whatever service. So when I've done this with Teams with Brad in the morning, I get into a situation where it, it just doesn't give me all of, like if I plug in a particular microphone, I, it won't let me change the headphone correctly. And it just doesn't, it's not as good. So this kind of solves the problem. You go through your PC. You get to use the high quality camera. It's I don't know. It, to me, it, to me, it looks great. But I mean, given you know, yeah, I like <laughs> it. What we have, I'm using what it we too. have to work with. Yeah. Um, but it works great. Yeah, camo. That's it. I'm pro yeah, um, and I don't have an app pick this week, but I do have a. I'm sorry, I don't have a a tip of the week, but I do have a second app pick. Actually, technically, two. Um, Edge version 102 is out. Uh, no major new features in that release, but there are some small PDF improvements and some policy changes for businesses. Uh, but Vivaldi 5.3 is out, and that's actually a bigger update. Uh, that has a bunch of personalization improvements, including, this is going to sound like a throwback feature, but it's the ability, they call it, <coughs> excuse me, they call it uh, the ability, uh, they call it edit editable toolbars, which sounds like, hey, we've been able to edit toolbars for a long time. It's actually a lot more than that. So, you can fully edit any toolbar in the application, save it, sync it across PCs, and then send it back to defaults if you want. That includes like the navigation bar, the status bar, the different toolbars that appear in things like Vivaldi Mail and other views. It's like, it's, it's soup to nut, like it's incredible. Um, they also added a really cool feature where on the different pages of settings, you know, you can go through and, and configure just the general browser settings. Vivaldi is like this, <laughs> like it's, designed for personalization. If you care about personalization, this is the browser you should be using. But there are so many options and they have all these different pages. And they actually now have a button on every single page that will go back to defaults, but only for that page. So you can kind of do it in a more granular fashion. You don't have to like nuke the whole thing from space and then, uh, you know, go back and do all the stuff that you want. So uh, that's available now. And there's a new version for um, Android as well uh, that it came out today that will sync search engines to desktop uh, and phone and tablet, you know, across all of them. So you're going to do it to me again, aren't you? You're going to you're going to make me. Well, switch. I just it depends on what you care about. You know, I, mean, they're, they're, I think every browser has its little niche. And I think uh, Vivaldi is one of several big Chromium based browsers. So you get all those advantages, the extensions and everything. True. Um, true. But they're really, really big on customization. Yeah, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, now, nice. time for Mary Jo Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Mary Jo? Yeah, I'm curious if you guys knew about this. I, I saw it was announced during Build, but not at Build, I guess just simultaneously with Build. Um, Microsoft is allowing people who have Windows Server 2022 to install Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 directly on Windows Server. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, and I looked this up, and I guess you could do this before with WSL 1 on Windows Server 2019, which I didn't realize either. 
And so I was looking up why people might want to do this. And I saw some people saying, you know, it would be less resource, a less resource intensive way to run a Linux distro on Windows Server than spinning it up in a VM or doing it in some other way. Oh, yeah, for sure. Huh. Yep. Right. So I'm like, ah, OK, I guess that's why that might be interesting to people. And and a lot of people have been like very uh, enthusiastically embracing this. So it's available right now to seekers on Windows Server 2022 if you install uh, last week's cumulative update. But it's going to be rolling out generally to anyone who's running Windows Server 2022 um, this month in June, probably on Patch Tuesday, I would guess. So yeah, kind of an interesting new twist. Um, going forward, Microsoft says they're going to be releasing WSL simultaneously for Windows Desktop and Windows Server for all the distributions. Isn't so that's kind of isn't cool. it moving to the store on desktop? Yeah, isn't that, so? <laughs> yep. How, so so obviously yeah. it's not in the store and server. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does server have that's a strange. store? Uh, no, 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 right? They probably did briefly, right? Uh, maybe the, I don't know. I would prefer right because they took away the GUI, right? Yeah. Like oh, there's GUI's no GUI not really at all. a thing on oh, server okay, anymore, good, good, good. right? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. which is the other reason to have WSL actually if you're in a mixed sure. environment. Yeah, you're already true. running. Yeah, automate true. things. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually just one of the things I'm really excited about with the Dell is uh, getting to run. Emacs on my uh, Windows machine. I cannot Watch wait. It. Careful with what you're saying. <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> code name pick of the week, Mary Jo. Yeah, so this is an interesting code name. Um, Zach Bowden, Windows Central, he seems to have all the Surface code names. He said, Surface Laptop Go 2, code name was Zuma, Z-U-M-A. So it makes you wonder which Zuma. There's a lot of things named Zuma. Um, there's a very famous UK restaurant, that, and there's also a New York restaurant called Zuma, a Japanese restaurant. Um, I guess the Chocolate Lab on Paw Patrol is named Zuma. Who knew? <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe okay. for that. Or there was a famous South African anti-apartheid leader whose name was Jacob Zuma, and people call him Jay-Z. So the other Jay-Z, um, also Zuma. I don't know which one it was. Um, I don't think there's a place named Zuma. Often they use place names. Um, but yeah, Is there, kind of a, a, isn't there a Zuma, one. Arizona? Am I oh, wrong? Oh, is there? Is Paul there? would know. Zuma, Arizona. Zuma. I feel like Zuma. there is, but I might be wrong. Yuma. I'm going I'm with of Paw Yuma. Patrol. I'm, I'm going with Paw like, Patrol. Never mind. I'm like, I don't, yeah, I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Okay, it could be uh, just a nickname for Montezuma. I think Paw yeah, Patrol, Montezuma. guys. Paw if I was picking right. one, I'm going we'll with Paw Patrol. Why not? Why not? I'm going to let Why you not? pronounce this uh, beer of the week. Yes. How's so your the beer of the week <laughs> Brasserie de Dieu du Ciel Rose d'Ibiscus. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> uh, Brasserie of the God in the Sky. Yeah, or God in Himmel. The God yes. in Heaven Brasserie. The God in Heaven Brasserie. Yeah. Um, this is a really famous brewery in Montreal. And when Paul used to drink beer back in the day, we went to Toronto together several times. Yeah. He's hanging drank, his head in shame. We drank a lot of the Brasserie du Ciel. <laughs> it's true. Just saying. I remember. <laughs> yeah, they uh, make excellent beers. Um, I like beer with hibiscus in it. Um, it gives it a little, a little bit of acidity. And this is a wit beer, so it's a very... Nice beer for hot days. And this so far this week on the East Coast, we've been having a lot of hot weather, even though it's not technically summer yet. So this would be a perfect summer quencher. If you see mm. any of their beers, though, all of them are really good. Um, and you can find them in the U.S., not just in Canada. So check uh, them out. Summer quencher. Yes. Rosé d'Abiscus or d'Abiscus. Yeah, there's a better pronunciation. Brasserie du Ciel. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Oh, très bien. <laughs> the guy spit on Very the nice. Uh, <clears throat> well, 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 if it's beer. By the way, I'll be drinking tonight a delicious black sugar milk tea. Oh, my I, God. Mm. God. I know. Is that, is, um, is that a bubble tea? I don't know what it is. It's, we got it. We had a Korean for lunch. Oh, yeah. I saw like that on the tea. memo and I said on the menu. It sounds uh, delicious, menu, actually. It's a little yeah. sweet. It's probably milk from a yak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it's good. It's good. 
It's uh, mm. it's not beer, but you probably it's, it's enough not. sugar you could probably ferment it. So it could be a kombucha <laughs> later later on down the road. <laughs> hey, that was fun. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we survived two major breaking news incidents. Uh, <laughs> she did. And uh, we got through... Next uh, week, we'll have analysis of the uh, Depp Heard trial. Actually, uh, yeah. yes, we're going to bring in some legal eagles. No, that's that's coming up <laughs> next on Twig. Uh, Paul Therat is at therat.com. That's his blog. Become a premium member because his series on programming Windows, the history of Windows, is fantastic. Uh, and he also has a book... Field Guide to Windows 10 at leanpub.com. Soon, the 22H2 version of the Field Guide for Windows 11 <laughs> yep. will make its appearance there as well. Leanpub.com. Yep. Mary Jo Foley blogs for ZDNet. Her, uh, her site is all about Microsoft.com. And uh, together they are... And it's also called that. It's called it? it and is. it is it. It's all about Microsoft it is, and, it's and it's called, called that. that. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> We do this show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Uh, if you want to watch us do it live, you don't have to because it's, you know, it's on demand. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's fun to watch live. And if you, you've got some time uh, of a Wednesday afternoon, just go to live.twit.tv. There's live audio and video there. Uh, after the fact, you can get on-demand versions at twit.tv slash WW. Uh, if you uh, don't like ads... You can get ad-free versions of this show. There's actually uh, ad-free versions on iTunes and I think Spotify now. Uh, they're about, I think it's two ninety nine an episode, or rather a month for four episodes. So that's a good price. Yeah. Uh, or you can join Club Twit and get all of our shows ad-free for seven bucks a month. So that's obviously the <laughs> the better deal if you like supersized packages of goodness. You also get access to the Discord with Club Twit, and you get the after the uh, and before the show uh, chit chat, things like that on our Twit Plus feed. Twit.tv slash Club Twit if you'd like to become a member. We really, really appreciate our members. In fact, they're going to make possible something very exciting, which we'll be announcing soon because uh, we can launch shows in the club. When a show gets launched, it's hard to get advertisers. They don't know the show yet. So uh, we can launch shows in the club, supported by the club members. <laughs> right. And then as it grows, if it grows, we can uh, we can make it public. Some shows, you know, are still in the club. Is it like going to be a Johnny Depp podcast? Shh. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Judge Judy today. He said, he said, she said with her and Depp. It'll be really fun. Uh, <laughs> really fun. A bandana. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is all at twit.tv slash club twit. Please join. We, we appreciate the uh, support. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, of course, a YouTube channel for Windows Weekly. You can watch the videos of every show there. Probably the best, the easiest, to be subscribed. Now, if you're a member of the club you can, or on the iTunes deal or the Spotify deal, you can subscribe to those ad-free versions. Otherwise, just uh, you know, go to twit.tv slash www. You get the URL or even a link directly to the podcast client. And add it. Search for it if you have to. At Windows, on, It's called Windows Weekly. Uh, and that way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available late Wednesday. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you uh, next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher. I got to tell you this story just because it just happened. I we went to the the notary that we bought used to buy the house in yeah. Mexico City. Yeah, mm -hmm. notaries in Mexico are more powerful than lawyers, right? So Ooh. we actually we had all of his staff come into the room at one time or another over the course of like four or five hours. It took a long time. Oh God! And then at the end, <laughs> at the end, finally this guy came in and he was an older gentleman, really well dressed, had one of those like watches that was kind of hanging off his wrist, and I leaned into. <laughs> I leaned into my guy. Oh, I should say, sorry. His name is, the name of the place was called Public Notary 11. Uh-huh. 
So when he walked in the door, I leaned into my Jose, my representative, and I said, Senor Anse, I presume. <laughs> Mr. Eleven. And he just, for he just burst out laughing. Anyway, Senor Anse has <laughs> just, e Senor Anse has just emailed me. You're funny. <laughs> some un unrelated topic. I bet no one ever I, said that to him. That's that's really no, good. No, no, no. Senor Anse. So. Ah, I love it. <laughs> 